this sucks. So, so what's up? Dude, I feel like a new man after that now. <laughs> Holy <laughs> fuck, man. Oh, man. I guess I felt great after work, but I don't know. Maybe just I got a text from the kid and everything. Kid made it home. All right. Oh, it's good. her longest drive ever that she's ever done. So I think that relieves some of my, well, I didn't, wasn't stressed or anything, but you always worry. Yeah. But Alleviate yeah, we'll some come. of that. Yeah, I woke up to hearing my phone dinging. I look at my clock on my phone. That's like 6.02. And first thing I'm thinking is, motherfucker, I slept in for work. I should be there right now at 6 o'clock. I thought it was my coworkers texting each other like, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> so I texted them right. I didn't, you know, still haven't clued in. I'm still half asleep. I texted them and I was like, motherfucker, I'll be right in. And they text me back like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then I clue in. I start walking out to the kitchen, and I'm like, "Oh, oh, it's six at night. A, that's a really good nap." <laughs> Holy fuck! But the I, funny I thing feel... is, you call me old constantly, and you're the one having cat naps. <laughs> oh, I love my cat naps. That's for damn sure. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's so good. Yeah, but talk about a full body reset right there. Holy moly! <laughs> I asked them if they wanted to go do a little downtown cleanup. <laughs> I'm good to go. How about you guys? Yeah, they they passed on that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's too funny. Oh, so, so this is uh in number 99 too, isn't it? Yeah, 99. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, man, it snuck up on us. Oh. Yeah. Snuck up on us just like this season it kind of came and went. Oh, man. It seems like we were just talking about, like, my caribou trip. Like, what? It, like, I was planning to go on my caribou trip. Yeah, it was crazy because there's lots of buildup. Like, I mean, the whole prepping, you came down to our 3D shoot and everything. So we were all, you know, talking archery all summer long and getting ready. And, yeah, then you were hitting it out first there. And yeah, we were kind of doing a real quick elk hunt just for a couple of days before we were focused in, in our family on on my wife's moose draw and then yeah it yeah, sure went fast fun. man <laughs> it started off september started off with me missing that mule deer that's right and uh then i went on a caribou trip and then it was then i spent a lot of time we were chasing uh deer for wyatt that's right uh he ended up getting a bear first he got a deer later right i think the second to last day before it closed for him he got a deer yeah and just been and what an accomplishment that is that's awesome yeah he had a good year he got a turkey he got a bear and a deer super insane first year yeah super insane yeah 10 years old and putting in the time yeah he put in yeah he went hard some a lot of those days we were up at four, grinding it out like last light too. Yeah, every weekend. Yeah, it was right up. We yeah, we went from the first weekend I got back on my care from my caribou trip. We went that Friday. I I let him have the day off school. We went Friday, Saturday, Sunday hard, like full daylight hours. Weekend after the weekend after that, and then it was the Thanksgiving weekend, and he, he was out. You know that was an extra long weekend, so he was out every yeah. day except for Thanksgiving Day. And then I went on my elk trip. The following weekend, I got that old monster bull. What a bull! Yeah, I think it's crazy. And then yeah. you went on your moose. No, I went on a mule deer hunt. Well, mule deer hunt. That's no, right. Yeah, then we, uh, I think White and I got out another weekend. I went on my mule deer hunt, got a mule deer, came back. We went out for the last chance for White to get a deer. That's right. Because it was the 30, closed for him on the 31st, and it was the day, that Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, we, he got his deer. 
and then we went out. Then my moose draw, and or my moose draw, we didn't talk about it. We you, we kind of did on uh, that short episode we did. We yeah. kind of talked about the beginning of that moose hunt was a nightmare. Dude, that was more than a nightmare. I've never heard a story like yeah, that. Yeah, and we did, and we didn't get a chance to get into it. So to recap, the <laughs> it, it was a group draw. So we had me and my two buddies, and these two guys, like these two guys, like my two friends. I've known these guys for well, you you know them both too. They're from Prince Rupert. They live down in Kelowna now. They are like oil and water. They do nothing but bitch and moan and fight and argue. <laughs> and the funny thing is, if they're not together, like if you're not with the two of them and you're talking to the other one, he'll say, oh, did you talk? To, like right away, he's like, hey, did you talk to, <laughs> you talk to Kazi? You know what I mean? Like he, they're always like, oh, did you talk to, have you talked to him lately? You know what I mean? Like, but when they get together, it's like, oh man, they're like an old married couple. That's hilarious. So we had those two guys were in the group with myself. And then we had another buddy of ours. He came, was coming down to give us a hand. So we had two vehicles and I was taking our buddy goose and we were putting the two hands together. So we took off the first day. We, we came down on Wednesday. It opened on a Tuesday. We came down Wednesday night. We started hunting Thursday morning. Beautiful day. We covered lots of ground. We did lots of glassing. Uh, we didn't see any moose that day, unfortunately. We got back to, we're, we're all crashed out in my trailer. Um, next morning we wake up and there's a foot of snow on the ground. Awful. So we're, we're, it was it, like, it's coming down like 10 men, like just snow everywhere. <laughs> and so we, we decided to wait for a bit, but we needed to get up into the back where the moose are right so like we pretty much decided that day was a wash so we're like you know what let's just go chase some whitetails they're close we can get to an area close by we can walk in it's not too bad well going up to where we need to get to where there's good whitetail hunting we get up there and then there's a farm truck jackknifed on the side of the road crossing the road that we need to we got to get by this guy to get up to where we hunt whitetails so after we try to help him, it's no go. It's too big. So after a while, we get there's a um, a fellow farm guy there. We flag him down. He goes gets his tractor, comes back, and he digs he digs a he digs some snow, and he's able to pull the truck out. Truck leaves, and as the truck's coming by, Kazi decides he needs to move over more, which he didn't. He then yeah. snow pulls him right into the ditch. So I pull him out. Now we're then finally and I pass him. And I, okay, let's not stop till we get there. So we get going. We we get into our spot. We both park. And um, we have a discussion what the plan is. All four of us take off up the hill. They're going to go left and go stay down low. And me and Goose, we're going to go up high. So we go up. We're hunting all day. Um, didn't see any deer. We come back down. And... They're pissing around with the vehicle. We're like, what happened? He locked his keys in the car, in the truck. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man. So we're trying to get in there, nothing. So he's like, man, can you run back to the trailer? Do you have any coat hangers? And I, I'm like, I can look. Sure enough, I had one metal coat hanger hanging in the closet. Always keep a metal coat hanger with you for <laughs> these emergencies. <laughs> so we pull. So we pull. We go down. We get that coat hanger come back up we get his truck unlocked and we're like he starts it up i'm like okay you guys are good i'm like well we're gonna drive down to the road here and then we'll we're gonna walk up to this other area and we're gonna check that out right at, and right for dark so we leave we're driving down the road and all of a sudden hold on i gotta back up here because i missed a crucial part of the story so thursday we went out Thursday, beautiful day. I forgot to mention that on the way back, I got two flat tires. Yeah. So, <laughs> and the weird thing is, the front two tires all had roofing nails in them. 
So either somebody didn't like people being up in their spot or somebody had some roofing nails in the back of their pickup and they tumbled out and they're on the road. So that's a weird thing to find up there. Yeah, because we we only we did some hiking and we glassed some areas, but we didn't. The trucks never really went off any spots where. But even then, why would there be a like? I had yeah. three nails in one in the passenger side tire and one nail in the driver side tire. So we took, so we switched the tires up there because the one the one with the three nails is going flat fast. So we took that tire off, put the spare tire on there, and we we made it home like. We were coming home. The tire, the the tire that had the one nail in on the driver's side, it was fine. Like it was losing air, but not a lot. Like it wasn't a big yeah. deal. So we get back to we go to my folks' house. We take the we take the front two tires off, and we plug them with some you know just those instant plugs. Yeah. And we so we leave the spare tire on. We plug the one with the three holes. Right, fill it back up with air. Seems to be fine. And the driver's side tire. We leave on with the one plug in it. So now, fast forward to where I just was talking on the story. We're we're leaving the other two locked their keys in the car. We're driving down the road, and the air in the spare tire that was on the roof that we put on to replace the tire with the three holes must have been low, because it popped off the rim. <laughs> So now we're in a foot of snow and it's snowing like mad. We're trying to change the tire. We're digging it out to get the jack under. Finally, we get this tire changed. We put the whole the tire with three with three holes on. Put the spare tire back up. It's totally flat. Screw it. So I'm like, well, what else can go wrong? Let's just go check this area because you never know. This these are the kind of days you have, and all of a sudden a big buck walks out. So sure enough, we go to this area. And we see a buck and we're glass and a glass. And I'm like, I already, I already punched my tag. So I'm like, goose, get ready. Like this could be, you know, I knew it was a buck. Cause we see, well, first of all, I seen some snow moving off a tree and then I, we start glassing in there and I could see some antlers. I couldn't get a count on how, if it was legal or not. Cause it had to be four on one side. So I'm like, get ready. So he's all lined up, ready to go. And he's, so it's the, finally it walks out. I'm like, oh damn, it's not legal. So we're like, oh, okay. Bummer. So we get back to the truck. Now my truck won't start. My SUV won't start. Like just won't start. It won't start. So we're like, oh my God. <laughs> so we dig out all the snow from underneath the truck and like I'm turning it and he starts tapping the starter and it fires up. We get it. The starter must have been frozen a little bit or something. Cause so we go, we're like, okay, well let's get out of here. So we go all the way back to my trailer and park we parked close, like close enough where we could fix the starter if we had to, but the starter seemed fine. Like, cause I know I haven't had an issue with it ever since then. So that was that day. This is, that's day two, day three. We're like, okay, now that stops snowing, maybe we could go out to look for some moose. So we go back out looking for some moose we're driving, we're driving, we're plowing, we're trying to get to an area where, we don't have to walk 12 miles to get to where we have to walk another two miles where we can glass down to some valleys. So we start driving. We're, we're cruising along. We stopped to get out to take a piss and goose is like, Hey man, uh, this tire is getting low <laughs> <laughs> and it's the tire with the three nails. In it. And I'm like, how low he's like, it's pretty fucking low dude. And like, we don't have a spare. And we're way the hell out in the back. <laughs> and this is day three of our moose hunt. So I'm like, oh, shit. So we turn around and we come right back. We get back to my trailer. And like, man, if it was another 10 or 15 m- minutes, we would have been hitchhiking. That's crazy. And luckily, but like, you can't ever tell when you're driving in snow. Like, you know what I yeah. mean? Like. Luckily, we made it back, so I jacked the, sh- the vehicle up, took those two front tires off and the spare. We headed back to town. We planned, we got there Wednesday night. We planned on being there all the way till Sunday night. We hunted Wednesday, partial day for whitetails on, or we hunted Thursday, all day Thursday, hunted for partial day for whitetails on Friday, and we, we got the flat, got the tires off, and it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. 
And I was coming home at 11 and I called you and you're like, no shit, you got a moose down already. And I was like, no, you're like, why the fuck are you calling me? And I told you the story and you're like, oh, dude. I said it's just bad omen right there. Like you're just stop moose hunting. Like there's something telling you don't do it. (laughs) Yeah, don't do it. And it's funny too, because like uh, I was bow hunting. My buddy had his rifle and when we were changing the tire that popped off the rim, there's this grouse and he's sitting the. (laughs) <laughs> 20 yards above us and he's just sitting there chirping us they eh? chirping us so i take my bow and i shoot it knock his head right off the body <laughs> <laughs> and then my arrow's gone and goose is like you feel better i was like yeah i do i feel a lot fucking better <laughs> something had to die oh man but i got redemption so yeah i just i don't think i've ever i've heard of lots of people with, you know everybody has some bad stories or a bad moment on a hunter something some bad luck but i don't think i've ever heard of a single story that's had that much in that short of a period of time no and not even like oh yeah i've been hunting a month into this tag or whatever it's like no we're just starting yeah this is day it started on the first we got there on the second we hunted the third the fourth and we're out of there by the morning of the the next like we had like a day one day of good hunting but it's luckily, nuts. it's the shitty thing is, is we took, well, not we, but the guy, like the other guys, they took, they took a week off work. Yeah. Right. For myself, I could just come and go. It's not a huge deal. But for them, they booked the time off work. They weren't able to get out again ever. That was it. That was their whole moose draw. Yeah. Was those, was that one day of hunting moose. So it really sucked for them, but I mean, you can't do anything about the weather. It is what it is. I mean, we could have been a little bit more prepared, but. It's still, though, like when you talk about flat tires and all that, like, I mean, there's only so much you can oh. do. There's, there's only, you know, like yeah, the... in, in your vehicle, the starter thing and like. Well, and if people are listening saying, why didn't we just jump into Kazi's vehicle? Because we had two vehicles. He had an SUV. I have an SUV. His uh, drive shaft <laughs> fell off broke on his truck on his day, suv is that day two because like... that was <laughs> that was on that was on yeah that was on the morning that's i gotta back up see it, it's already been there's so months. much went wrong <laughs> so this this is friday friday was when we had all the we had the nails on the tire my truck wouldn't start we we got back and they're already back we went headed out saturday morning we go to he he gets down the driveway and his drive shaft falls out so we're like <laughs> fuck so we get his vehicle back parked those well mike had enough he's like you know what i'm going home he he went home cause he jumps in with us and the three of us are going and we get down the road and we're driving and then that's when we stopped out goose is taking a piss he's like hey man we got an issue <laughs> this tire's going flat fast yeah, yeah so he God. had to leave his vehicle there. I took the three tires off. He got a yeah. ride back with Goose, and then we had he came back later and he fixed it all. But what a fucking nightmare! Oh, what are the? I mean, and two vehicles. You think, oh yeah, two vehicles, we're good because yeah. you know we've all had issues where one vehicle and then you know call for some help, you get it fixed, and then you're good to go. But to have two vehicles crater like that, like that's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Hopefully it never ever happens again, but <laughs> man. So uh, what a story. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was one thing we didn't talk about, but like good year 2022 for Bear. Had lots of fun. Turkey hunting was fun. Why got a turkey? Yep. I got a turkey. Um one of these years I'll get it, down to turkey hunt with you. Did we ever tell did I ever tell the story on did I ever tell the story about Kazi? was in with the moose draw, was hunting turkeys and he was sitting in my blind cause he's sitting in my blind that Wyatt shot his turkey out of and I don't think so no okay anyway so well no Wyatt didn't shoot the turkey out of the blind okay anyway I had a blind set up cause he was in my blind because he wanted to shoot a turkey. He's had bad luck with turkey. And now I've already been on. I've, I th- I've told a story once or twice about his exp- last experience when we s- were sleeping in the wall tent. And he bailed and he had a bruise on his ass the size of like a soccer ball. Yeah. So anyway, so this time 
um, we didn't get to hunt together, but I'm like, hey, my blind set up down there. I've seen turkeys down there. Why shot a turkey close to there? I shot a turkey close to there. Go sit in the blind and maybe something good happen. He goes in the blind. He falls asleep. <laughs> he wakes up. There's two turkeys in front of him. He freaks out, panic, shoots at one. One takes off running. The one he shot at hits it. <laughs> He's running after turkey. And like he doesn't have his gun with him. Guns in the blind. He's running after this turkey. He he gets the turkey, trips and falls and breaks his hand. <laughs> I swear to fucking God, I'm not making this shit up. I swear to God. I, we can get him on. He could tell a lot better than me. And I'm like, I'm like, you did what? He's showing me the pictures of like his broken hand, the x-ray. And I'm like, what the fuck did you do? He's like, oh. Uh, I was chasing a turkey. Tur I, did I fell asleep in your blind. I woke up. Bird was there. Bed did a bad shot. Turkey ran off and I tripped. I broke my hand. He says it like there's no big deal. Like it's just another day. The best part was he shot this thing. It was so close when he shot it. He blew all the chest apart. He barely got any meat out of it. <laughs> oh. It's priceless, man. I forgot about that, but I do remember when you were telling me about that story. It was <laughs> yeah. just like, how, how, how? Like, yeah. You know, at least maybe a cool elk hunter a goat hunter something oh, like that scaling up the thing about the thing about hunting with that guy is, is like it's never a dull moment did i ever tell you the story when he like when he got charged by the cougar no i don't think so so he's walking in in the dark he doesn't have a headlight just walking randomly in the dark and he moves his gut and he's like here's this noise he turns around and there's like he sees these two little eyes and they're growling at him. He's like, what the heck? So he had a flashlight, puts his flashlight on. It's a cougar. Right. He, he's like, Oh, he's got a shot. He's got his, uh, he's got his lever, act his lever action. He's hunting for does for white tail does. Got a lever. action. rocks one and thing takes off. He goes up hundred yards from where that cougar was. And he sits down behind a tree, just sitting there waiting for the daylight to come out. And then he hears the snap. <laughs> He hears a twig snap behind him, and that cougar, I don't know if it's the same oh, cougar, man. but we think it is, turns around, the cougar's 15 feet from him. That's so he's insane. like, holy shit, he turns around, and he, and he gets a shot off, scares the shit out of the cat, the cat took off. He comes back, he's white as a ghost. We're like, what the fuck happened to you? He's like, oh, man. But it's like never a dull moment with that guy. Like, so many times, like, I've been hunting with that guy, and like, he's lost a contact. And he's looking around, he finds his contact, and it's like in the mud. And so he puts his mud like this contact in his <laughs> eye, and he's like, Oh, it's burning, it's burning. Like, like it's just like, but the thing is, like, Kazi's a really smart guy, like, but it's just like, just like, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Never a dull moment, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, great for the entertainment factor, that's for sure. Yeah, so anyway, so that's how. It started off with spring turkey, bear. Spring bear was good. I got a bear. Never yeah. got that big bear I was after, but hopefully this year. Was that the cinnamon? Yeah. He was cool. He was cool looking. Yeah, and big. He's big. really big. Yeah. Yeah. And then we did the archery shoot. I can't wait for next year's archery shoot. <clears throat> yeah, that should be should be a blast. Yeah, I see already that there's a lot more archery shoots going on this year, or like yeah. planned for 2023 that 3d archie group or whatever that you invited me to on Facebook or whatever. That's where I've been seeing a whole bunch of those posts for yeah. all over the, the province, which is pretty cool. Yep. Really cool. Yeah. yeah and then yeah. it just rolled through the fall and that was it. And you Did guys had a, a good, fall? yeah, it doesn't we, seem like it. it you went, guys had a good, yeah, we like, had, it, good it, it was season. Yeah, the moose season was awesome. Everything else was a little bit slow. Well, it was, it was action packed as far as animals, but nothing came together. Elk season, we had, uh, which we just did a couple of days of elk uh, in bow season in BC here, just uh, first to the ninth. But I only, it was so hot. Like it was ridiculous. It was in the 30s, 30s Celsius. And, uh, my partner Greg and I got on, I think it was day two. Day two or day three, doesn't matter. Called in a couple really nice five points broadside. They're sitting on top of a ridge, but they're 80 yards away. 
and I wasn't, I don't have a slider or anything. I've just got a five fixed pin and uh, they're sitting there and I couldn't get a shot off. I'm not if 60 yards. It was dead. Like I just, I was pinned where I was and uh, Greg was on the other side of a bush. They had no idea he was there and I was able to um, just send him a signal just to keep calling while I was frozen. And yeah, those elk came down and the wind had shifted. And as soon as they came down, I already had pre-ranged some spots. And I was like, they just got to get right there. Just that, just this bush or whatever. And anywhere in there, I can let it fly. And they got within like 10 yards of that. I watched them come down and sure as shit, they caught, they winded us. So we couldn't move. Like we we're, we thought we were in the perfect spot setting up and uh, just not quite far enough down toward the water and stuff like that. Like we thought we had the perfect funnel spot. We found the perfect funnel spot after the fact. But yeah, they just hit that certain spot and boom, it was just instant. They were just gone as soon as they caught our wind there. And we couldn't move. We couldn't adjust. We were set up, you know. Yeah. At once that you're, moment once you're committed, time. you're there. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was that. So that was exciting. Um, but, you know, unfortunate when you can literally, there wasn't 80 yards wide open, nothing in the way. And when I say there was, a, you know, the, the wind, it wasn't like there was a wind you could feel just enough to carry your scent. That's all like it. You can ask for a better shot. So next year I'll be trying to make sure I'm confident up to 80, but we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. And it, a and lot to do that's with, your, whatever. with your equipment. Like if you're not shooting a slider, 80 yards is tough. Well, with cause five, I don't want a five pin fixed. Yeah. I don't want to guess. Well, I want when I, when that pins on, I want to know when I let go of that string, everything up to my ability, it's a hundred percent dead shit happens, you know, from that point to the point where your arrow hits or doesn't hit or whatever, but it's no different for me with rifle too. If I'm taking that shot in my mind at that very second, that thing's dropping. Yeah. As soon as it, there's no ands, ifs or buts, I don't do hail Marys or anything like that. So yeah, it was, it was one of those things. It's whatever. It's a cool experience. Good learning experience too. Yeah, I find then, I find shots under sixty yards are harder than shots above sixty yards. Why do you think that? I find it's just you just have it's easier to get busted when the animal's sixty yards, like sub sixty, sub like fifty yards. Yeah. Fifty yards is good. Anything above fifty, you got a little bit of breathing room there, right? Like you can shift your body, you can move like. They're just so tuned into their surroundings that they hear just hear so well that any little noise, movement, and like we talked before about like uh, um, staring at an animal, like, you know, look away from the animal. They can see the, like, prey can see the eyes of a predator, right? Yeah. And I just feel when you're within, you know, sub 50, it's it's harder because you got all these other elements you have. You don't have that little bit of breathing room, oh, but yeah, you have yeah. to be able to make the shot too. And that comes into like your work, your process, what you're doing all year, right? Like what you're doing now, where you're practicing now for the fall. Yeah. Yeah. And how many you do, how many arrows you do. Yeah. Like it's, you know, the people who just go out once, you know, even once a week to shoot, you know, great on you for doing that. Yeah. People who, people who are shooting confidently, at 80 yards you're out there almost every day yeah yeah for sure like even even for me i'm not shooting out to 80 yards but i bet you 95 percent of all the days from the time i got my new bow to the time hunting season hit i was even in my backyard if i couldn't shoot longer distances at the range or at work i was letting arrows go just yeah. practicing my process at you know 10 or 15 yards it doesn't mean you have to long bomb it's just no it's making sure your process is a hundred percent yeah that's exactly where you're gonna get yeah. screwed up yeah exactly it's the process and it's all ma muscle memory right and it's you know it's a process and it's the perishable too like if you don't do it all the time you oh yeah you forget these little things like hand torque is huge hand torque is mm -hmm. one of the biggest one of the biggest things in archery is hand torque yeah and yeah, you can it's... tell right away with your shot like does you could be shooting 10 feet and you can tell you could tell by how your arrows are sitting in the target if you have if you got hand torque. When you shoot enough, 
you know instantly oh yeah regardless on that arrow hitting where you want or not yeah you can tell when something felt off oh yeah uh, yeah instantly you could tell right as soon as it leaves your string yeah yeah because it's just like butter otherwise once you kind of have it well it's like down. a good golf shot too right like like i'm not a golfer but i do i have golf but when you hit the golf ball good you know yeah. it or like a, a slap shot in hockey when you hit that puck good yeah it's hitting the back of the net oh absolutely or the yeah. boards <laughs> After it goes through the net. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's kind of how the beginning of our, our season went. And then once that was done, I, I pretty much wrote off my whole elk season for my wife's moose tag. Um, pretty much just guided her around and you just, with our LEH system here, you might get that draw once and you'll never draw it again for the rest of your life. Yeah. Maybe you'll be, that lucky person who gets two or three in, you know, 10 or 15 years, very few and far between most people it's one and done. So yeah. I was just like, I'll sacrifice my main mics. I elk is my jam. That's what I enjoy doing the most. And I gave it up, you know, and I'll never ever regret giving up those days because the experience of what I learned about moose hunting was insane this year because I don't get to do it much. It's not like yeah. we have an over-the-counter tag down here. It's like, oh, I'll go after moose this year instead of elk. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. It's, it's a big learning curve. And it was it was really cool to get out there and, you know, pound the bush and kind of, you know, see what kind of terrain they're in and what they're not in. And this is different to the type of, the moose down here are different than your typical, you know, prairies or other places where it's like, look for the swamps. You're guaranteed to find them. It doesn't work like that where I am down here. They do like their wet areas. There's no doubt about it. But these moose like their heavy timber. They like their slides. Yeah. Um, they definitely come down to the water. But yeah, it's not your typical scenario that you see on TV and all that kind of stuff. No, and I feel like the area you're in, you're in the foothills of the Rockies, which is harsh terrain, is that most ungulates, they kind of like the same. They like where they're going to be. They like being comfortable where they feel protected, right? Yeah. They'll go into those meadows, all that kind of stuff, just like anything else. But they like that backstop of heavy timber right behind them. So when they got to take off, they're, they're gone in seconds and you're not finding them. Yeah. But, you know, that's, but what that's an amazing, like, fun. you but, called that bull in, like, that was awesome. You called that bull right in to 15 yards or whatever awesome. it was. And, like, and, like, <sighs> I don't get it. Did she panic? Like, like, was she excited? Well, she was, was shit in her pants. Like before, like before she seen the bull, was she excited? Did she have buck fever before she seen the bull, or was it like, did it all happen so fast that she didn't realize and she just pulled the trigger? And well, then after she was like, "Holy shit, what did I just do?" It was almost like there was a few stages because it was we were driving out to our spot where we were going to hike in and call, and literally twenty yards, thirty yards from the road that we were going to turn around in, which was the end of kind of where we'd been hunting. Um, this cow moose just comes screaming out the bush right across the road, bull moose right on her heels. And I was like, Oh, okay. I wasn't really expecting that, but all right. So I was like, let's just go park down the road. We'll walk out. We'll listen. We'll do some calling. And so we got set up pretty quick, bare minimums um, with equipment. And I got our crossbow set up. And I was like, let's just walk up the edge of this road here so we can duck into the bush if we need to. And I can hear this bull calling this cow. I can hear him grunting. And so I let out a couple calls. And uh, I couldn't tell at first whether he was answering me or if he's still chasing this, this cow. Because it's thick timber where he went into. And I was like, we'll go in after him if we have to. But I was hoping on calling him out. And sure shit, we walked up the road and there was an old spot where a grader had kind of pushed in um, a drainage ditch so we could actually stand side by side and be tight to the bush. And I let out a couple calls and it was at that moment I realized this thing was answering me. So I got her set up. I told her where I wanted her to be, all this kind of stuff. And I was just going to be, you know, half a step behind her or whatever. And, uh, but I'm on the outside of her a little bit. So she's protected. 
and I'm kind of down on one knee and I can hear his hooves hit the ground. And I've had some cool experiences <laughs> with screaming elk coming in and elk are not small. There's no you know, six, seven, 800 pounds. And but I've had those things come screaming huge. in. And this thing came out and around the corner and I can see its antlers just before she can. And my eyes, I think went to the size of the saucers and she's kind of looking at me. I think that was just like the whole, <laughs> oh my God. And the shit's going <laughs> to get real here. Oh, and I it love took, it. You know, two steps is huge for them. Like they cover so much ground. Oh, yeah. And so I keep calling this thing and it looked away and I, I did another little, very, very soft call. And she described it to me as a child's horror story <laughs> with this big <laughs> monster coming out of the bush and around the corner. <laughs> and this thing, I was calm as day. I'm not the one pulling the, you know, the trigger releasing the, it was archery season. Mm-hmm. So that's why she had the bow, but I'm giggling to myself. Cause I'm thinking whatever the pressure's not on me. It's on her <laughs> and I can see her fucking shaking. And I do not before she her. shot like... before she shot and she was trying to raise her crossbow. And I just kind of slowly put my hand on her arm or on her elbow. And I was like, no, we got to wait till this thing's broadside or we got to see what it's going to do, but you can't shoot it the way that it How is. How far it was away when this was happening? This is at 20 yards. 20 yards. 20 yards. And it's walking. It's walking toward us. Yeah. So it's quartering to us. And I give it one little call without my hand going up to my mouth, just yeah. kind of with my mouth. And this thing locks in on the direction. These things, I mean, it didn't yeah. see us. We were, we were perfectly still. And this thing is drooling. Like there's drool coming out of its mouth and it's, that's touching the ground, like disgusting. <laughs> and even I'm like, oh, holy shit, this looks big. <laughs> She's still shaking. She's still, you know, trying to pull the bow up and I'm trying to, you know, I still got my hand on her elbow and I'm just like, no, not right now. And uh, after I did that little mouth call at the very end, I, uh, I had to stop calling because it was like beelining straight for us. And I thought it was going to walk over top of us the way it was moving. And finally it stopped and I kind of squeezed her elbow and kind of made eye contact with her and just kind of mouthed to her, be like, wait till it moves. It's either going to get bored and keep walking down the road or swing to go back to that cow, or it's going to turn toward us and walk into the bush. I said, it's only got a couple options. And yeah. I'm watching its eyes kind of scan the area. And then there was just a moment where I could tell it was going to do something. And I just kind of gave her elbow, just a little squeeze, just like now. Yeah. Oh, well, it started moving its head. I gave her a little squeeze. She raised her crossbow. And th- things spun around pretty quick because they're pretty agile for how big they are. And I'd already pre-talked to her about behind the shoulder, behind the shoulder. And she was a tiny bit far back. But those moose are so big, their lungs are yeah, they're huge. Um, and not far back by much. But I was super impressed she got her shot off the way that she did. And uh it wasn't a pass through. I think it broke one blade on the broad head, and I think it hit a rib on the other side. So the whole bolt was actually inside the bull. It didn't go through. That's um, cool. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure it shattered one rib on the way in, hit the rib on the far side. And the whole shaft was inside the bull. Yeah, it would have this, had to hit the inside of the rib. Yeah. Because it would have just... What were Otherwise you guys shooting? What kind of broadheads were, you, were, broadheads were you shooting on? Uh, that there was a recluse from Black Widow Innovations. It's what I shoot on my uh, for my compound bow as well. Now you're I shooting the exact same broadhead? Yeah. I just put uh, one of my broadheads on her, uh, on her crossbow shafts. Oh, okay. And I tested these out before I went out too to see how they flew because Evie doesn't have we uh one of our friends lent her the the bow, the compound. Crossbow. Crossbow. Or, sorry, crossbow, sorry. And so I went out and pre-tested it and just made sure everything was flying right. Yeah. Um, what kind of bow crossbow head. was it? Uh I think that one was a a ten center center point or center point, I think. I think it's center point. I think it was center point. Center point. Is there a center point? I think it's ten point. Maybe ten point. 
center point, something like that. It's not an expensive, it's not an Excalibur or anything like that, but it does the trick, let me tell you. And yeah, yeah that thing turned, I mean, it got hit hard because it's right away as it spun, got hit and it crashed into a couple of trees, like within three yards of it. And uh, it, it ended up going in to the bush, I'd say maybe 60 yards, 70 yards, absolutely top down this trail. And I couldn't hear it pile up. Like I was waiting for the crash or whatever. What ended up happening is it, the only little tiny meadow that there was maybe 50 yards by 50 yards, it crashed in it. I had no idea the meadow was there. And, uh, but in that process, I sent, I always carry an in reach and I was texting my hunting partner and, and his partner. And it was like moose hit moose down moose down haven't gone in after him i was going to give it a little bit just yeah. to, i didn't want to push it because i knew she hit it good i was like it's not going to be very far backing up a tiny bit when we left camp my hunting partner it was his last day he had to head back into town so he was packing up his trailer as we headed out so we took our time getting out to the spot and by the time we i mean when it was all said and done i was like I think we can catch him. Like <laughs> I don't have like a, I've got a portable radio, but he doesn't have one. Mm-hmm. So I was like, let's rip back to camp. It's like, t- I'd say 20 K back. I was like, I think I can catch him. Cause he's pulling his trailer. We get to the turn off to where the camp was set up and I can see the water <laughs> drain marks from the trailer is after he dropped his fresh water as he's driving out. So we are hauling ass down the road, trying to catch him. And eventually I gave up at about 10 kilometers. I was like, it's not worth it. Yeah. So we started Evie's on the, on the in reach there and she's texting back and forth. And eventually my hunting partner, when he got back to cell service, you know, he's got this like <laughs> list of a conversation that's been going on for the past hour. Yeah. And so he, he drives home, drops his trailer heads all the way back out. And by that time um, we had tracked it in and I, pretty much had had it field dressed out and uh you know some pictures all that kind of stuff and we got lucky enough i had three feet of extra rope and we were able to get it out with <laughs> that was a slick setup you guys had though is it right like Locked i actually slick, got man. i got that idea from my conservation friend i got a couple friends who were conservation officers around here yeah and they have these setups built into their trucks a little more high end um, mine's portable so that I can take my winch and everything and keep it yeah. um, out of sight, out of mind. Well, explain it. Um, so what it, what it is, is I got a box built, custom built into the back of my truck. Uh, it's got a big eight by six by six beam at the front that I've um, custom or I've, I've drilled out ready rod holes that can stick up and will go right into my winch so that at the bottom, there's a bolt that is countersunk into the timber. So it can't pop up or down. And I can, with the four ready rods sticking out just whatever, an inch or so I can literally take my winch and I can slide it right over top of that. And just on two of them, I'll put a couple nuts just to hold the winch in place. And I can run jumper cables from my truck, um, to the power connectors of the, of the winch itself. And then I have a fulcrum, um, that's on near the tailgate of my truck. So that when you run your cable out, it keeps it off your tailgate because as soon as it goes down onto the ground, obviously gravity is going to take place. If you were to winch an animal and it would just cut a hole right through your, the end of your tailgate. So this keeps it up in the air on an angle until you get it close enough. And then you can release the pressure. And then, um, once it's up on your ramp or whatever you have, you can, uh, you can disconnect it and just let it loose and lay on the ground and drag the animal over top of it. Yeah. It's so slick. yeah, it's, I got it on YouTube on my YouTube channel and that it was just, so what would you have done if it was just, if you were that say it was the other way and you're short that much. I've been packing out for a very short distance. So would have pissed me right <laughs> off. Just quarter it up. I mean, pack it out, because, move it a yard and then be like, okay, oh, send it. I, yeah, I don't, and we got the truck in as far well, as you can't we could move the too. moose. 
No. Like, and, and that's I, the thing about when you get a moose down, like, all of a sudden you couldn't you're even like, move the head for a picture. It's like as it lays, that's how you take a picture. Yeah. And it's like, uh, like all of a sudden reality sits in. As soon as you get to that moose, you're like, holy fuck, man. Like, oh, you think something's ending? It's just beginning. Like my winch before I've pulled full elk into my truck with the winch set up. Not a problem. This thing was everything it had. I broke shit on there. Yeah. I had to beef it up when I got home after the fact. But we figured this thing was, you know, 1,100, 1,200 pounds dead weight dragging. The funniest part though, is that the only rope I have, I've got new stuff now, um, mm-hmm. but it's climbing rope, which is a little stretchy. Yeah. So when we got this all done, said and done, had it hooked up, we had this one spot where there was a mound of moss and dirt and everything. And we had Evie driving the truck and we were doing the signals together. And it was telling her to go and it was stretching, stretching. And it was sort of caught up on it. And then all of a sudden it let go. Not the rope. <laughs> Just there was enough tension that it literally <laughs> dragged that moose over that ramp. And there was probably four feet of air underneath it as it slingshotted over top of it. And it flew probably 10 or 15 feet over <laughs> these other two little uh, trees that I had cut down. Just, yeah. you know, two, three inch diameters or whatever. And I was like, oh, we might have to kind of move it around that because I didn't want it cutting up the tearing up the hide or anything like yeah. that and then getting into the meat but it shot it right over top of that there was legs flying up in the air I never seen anything like it <laughs> and oh, uh, so good yeah so i love the picture of you guys driving home and all you have is four legs and antlers sticking out of the back oh, like not even yeah. covered did you get any honks or like any waves or like when we hit the highway yeah we got passed by a few people and yeah, all thumbs I could up. see was thumbs up sticking yeah. out of the, the truck. They're obviously from people who know what kind of work we just went through. Yeah. To get that sucker in there. Yeah, that's the coolest thing is when you're coming back and you got like a big rack sticking out of the back and you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that wasn't even like an on purpose trying to hear, look at what I got. Yeah. Which I will do, but that was just, we had to make room and that was as far up as we could pull that thing and we barely got the tailgate shot on it <laughs> yeah that's awesome yeah, yeah. learn is she stuff. done now oh she, yeah she retired now she retired she kicked my ass and yeah i never hear the end of it every day how good she is and how much i suck at it <laughs> what was and the, the episode we did with uh, your buddy from the states uh yeah, we were, we were giving Brad? you we were giving you a hard time oh. not not punching any tags oh, yeah 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 bradley joseph clemens yeah i kind of yeah. remember you saying oh yeah we'll oh. see we'll see yeah <laughs> yeah this yeah and the thing is is we always have a friendly competition every it doesn't matter we're on to ice fishing now and we're already chirping each other <laughs> like, as to who's gonna catch the biggest fish and we haven't even gone out together yet and we're yeah. already at it the thing is, I may never get a chance to even top Evie's bowl. And not that I even care. It doesn't even matter to me. It's just the point of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just to stop the trash talk. That's all it is. Because I never trash talk her about me getting something bigger unless I got a checker in place. I got nothing now. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I shoot a bowl as big as yours, Kevin. Because she's going to be like, you know what you've never done? <laughs> never shot a moose before have you <laughs> not in archery season either. like i got nothing i'm gonna have yeah. to go up to alaska or, or way up in northern bc <laughs> like no nope. that was a nice bull what was the spread on that thing it was a 38 inch uh 38 inch spread and i think i can't remember if we considered it a seven by five or maybe a six there's a couple a couple of the points that were close we'd actually have to tape it and do measuring to see if they'd count, but we don't care. So we are just like, yeah, whatever it's. That was a good bull. Yeah. Well, especially for around here. There's a couple yeah. bigger ones that I had on camera, but few and far between bigger. It was, it was a beautiful bull. Yeah. That was good. No, I that forget was awesome. how you pronounce those ones. Is it Shiris? Yeah. 
Yeah. So Shires Bulls. So it was, yeah. it was impressive for a round here. And lots of fat on it too. So it hadn't really, it hadn't lost a ton of weight yet. Yeah. Cool to hunt moose in a rut. Totally different game than hunting them in November. Oh, I've, I've heard stories and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I get it. And now it's like, oh, you guys weren't kidding. Yeah. Like, insane. It's like nothing else. No, you can't explain it. No, Especially you can't. just the size. Well, the sheer size and mass of a moose is like, yeah, you see him on like, you see him on TV and you see him this, and you might have even seen him in the bush, but until you're actually there and you, you know, you're dragging your knife through them, it's like they're just, well, they're just, and they're just fucking huge, those things, man. And it's crazy. Again, you have to see it to believe it how they can get through that thick bush and it's almost oh, like man. the bush opens up for them and it's like nope you get free passage i'm not even gonna try to stop you because you're just gonna knock me over because boy have you ever seen so them run big. through the bush there's oh. literally a trail of where they've just like plowed like not obviously not big trees but smaller trees they just run right over oh yeah they don't even bother stopping no. it's crazy but they but you're right they are quiet like even even like an elk as big as that rack is, because like a moose rack is big, but an elk rack, it, you think it would get caught on so much shit walking yeah. through the bush. It like must that just elk, be the way that, it lays behind them. Like that elk I shot, like it was so quiet. Like I, I heard it, but like very vaguely. And the only reason I heard it was like, it was it like its rack just brushes up on some trees. Yeah. And that thing was yeah, fucking was... huge. Yeah, that was no spiker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was a big bull. In terms of big bulls, that was a I mean, obviously there's that way was, bigger bulls out big. there than that, but that's that was a big bull. No, big. For a lot of people, that's yeah, the thing was thing was big. And that thing was quiet as hell. But again, yeah, like we crazy. like we told a story, I don't remember what episode, but like, yeah, it was I was in the right place at the right time that day. That thing probably yeah. has probably did locals just had like a glimpse of that thing. Oh yeah, because the there's no way people would leave that thing alone if they knew it was there. I'd, I'd, no. I'd be, but like, there's I'm there's shooting. like deer like that. There's a mule deer down where I am right now. Like there's a mule deer that lives amongst the private land. Yeah. And it is absolutely massive. It's got two drop tines. I That's haven't seen cool. it for two years. Might be dead now. But it is huge. And people have seen it. It just lives in these private land areas. It just it's not getting shot at, so why should it leave? Yeah, like I said, I, I haven't seen it for two years. It could be dead now, but yeah. like yeah, That's it's just else. like one of those deer, but it's like, like that deer I posted on my Instagram in Kelowna. Yeah, that deer was probably the nicest four by like nicest typical meter I've ever seen on the on the hoof. Yeah, in my that's, life, that's beautiful. That was the biggest freaking like biggest deer. That thing was huge. Yeah, like massive. That was the biggest deer I've ever seen. It'll like, be interesting honestly. to see that three point that I sent you this year. Yeah, that thing is huge too. That thing because is. It'd, it'd be interesting one more year to see if it gets that four split, and see if it stays wide like that. It might just keep growing at three. Some deer do that. Yeah, but it'd be interesting to compare it to the one that you showed because yeah, like you yeah. say, that thing was just crazy. That deer, I've never seen a deer like that, like perfectly symmetrical. Like that was the biggest. That was the biggest deer I've ever seen on the hoof. That thing was freaking huge and like. The video, you know, it's like seeing it in a video or a picture. Doesn't do it as justice as like seeing it when you're like twenty feet from it. You're like, I was like, holy fuck, that thing is huge! And right away, I'm like, where's my phone? <laughs> yeah, I better run to my truck and get my phone. Oh. And now it's on to me, right? It's running away, but and that's where I don't care if it's a town buck, a wild buck. You got to appreciate something like that. Like it's just, mm -hmm. it's crazy, absolutely crazy. Yeah. That was a big buck. And then whitetail season. Good for you. 
It was a tough one for me. Yeah, well, it was, uh, it was a tough one for me too. Yeah, it, uh, you put in your time there. You had some opportunities. Yeah, I. Uh, and you're you're one, unfortunately. The four by four, you didn't get a. No, I missed you, the four by four. Missed the four by four. That's right. You shot over it or under it. Yeah, went right over it. And that, that was a nice. That was the biggest four point white tail I've ever seen in my life. That's a heartbreaker. That was huge. And then I seen, uh, I had that big one, that six point on my trail camera. That's right. That was a beautiful deer. I chased that guy for a long time. And then on the last day, the last day of archery, I had a uh, three by f- three, three by four walk in. I couldn't tell. I seen three on one side, looked like four on the opposite side, but it could have been three just from where he was standing. It was just getting dark. I made a shot on him, hit it, hit the deer. And I was using mechanical broadheads. And the mechanical broadhead froze. Didn't open. Uh, that sucks. Yeah. And we've talked about this before. And like, yeah, it was a heartbreaker. And like, I was using those, I was using the Wasp Shark Shooter all year. Why? I went back to the, I was using the Grim Reaper broadheads why because i started i was shooting with my hoyt and it was already set up and i just kept it the same yeah which in theory you don't want to be tinkering with stuff just before you're heading out no if it's working stick with it yeah and that rx4 i used at i killed a lot of stuff with that rx4 so yeah so anyway Found the arrow. That arrow was so cold. Like when you hit a deer, you could tell when you hit a deer, just the sound it makes. I found the arrow. That arrow was so cold. This is when it's minus 25. That arrow was so cold. It Like the blood trail, the arrow was frozen. So the blood didn't stick to it the way it should have. I still have the arrow. I can show you. You would, if I showed you the arrow, be like, man, I don't know. That doesn't look like you hit it. Like when I first pulled the arrow, I was like, I fucking missed. I'm like, how can I miss? I heard a hit deer. And then I start, and I start looking at it and you can see a bit of hair in the broadhead. The broadhead didn't flip open and I went to push on it and it's stiff, frozen. The blades froze because it was so cold. Do you think from the humidity of when you're driving there, like the warmth of in your truck and then going out to the cold? Well, and they could be in the snow too, right? Yeah. That's like you could hit a, you could hit tree and it was snowing throughout the time, right? Like it, it, it's, it, there's a lot of, I think it's like, it's sorry, dude, I replayed this in my head a hundred times. So anyway, I, I, when I first initially pulled the arrow out, I didn't think I hit it. I was like, I missed. But then I started looking and I seen some hair. So then I started looking further and further and like I'm looking down the arrow and I could see blood on the arrow. But it's not, the arrow was so cold, the blood didn't stick to it how it, you would, how it normally sticks to an arrow. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I hit it. I'm like, okay, good. No blood around where I hit it, which is not you know that's a lot of times sometimes there's blood sometimes there's not so i start looking around for blood trails I, and i find i pick up on a little blood trail right and now from the time that this has happened to the time i hit it, it is about 30 to 40 minutes so i start falling this i get on a blood trail and it's snow but it's snowing Right? It's snowing. So I find some blood. I start following it. And I bump the deer. And I'm like, fuck. 
So I wait and I listen. I don't hear the deer keep running. So I'm like, I knew where it was. So I'm like, okay, shit. And when you're walking in the snow, like the problem, the biggest problem with it is that it, it snowed, it got really cold, and now it's snowing again. So every time you step, it sounds like yeah. you're breaking ice. Yeah. So I'm like, shit. So I wait a little bit, but it's getting dark quick and it's snowing. I'm like, I'm running out of time here. So I start walking again. Now I got to put my headlamp on and I'm walking. And I hear, I hear it take off again, and I bumped it again. So I'm like, fuck this. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to walk back to my truck. I'm going to empty my pack. I'm going to get some better lights. So I walk back to my truck. From the time it took me to walk to my truck, unload my pack, get a big light that I had in my truck, and I had my headlamp on, and it snowed almost to pretty much an inch. That's crazy. I couldn't pick the, like... I couldn't, I I went to the same spot I was, I couldn't pick, I couldn't pick that blood trail up again. It sucked. And so I sat there and I walked back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, side to side, side to side. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's painful. Painful. Especially when you've been sitting in those cold temperatures for as long as you were. Well, you know, I don't care about that. I, I, I'll sit there for whatever. And then, so it's funny, like we were talking, I went back. So I went back the next day. I spent the entire day from light day to dark. Didn't go to work that day. Spent the entire day looking for that deer. Couldn't find the deer. But it had snowed a lot. I couldn't even find the tracks. I could barely see, like I could see my tracks where they were. Yeah. But I couldn't tell the tracks, fresh tracks. There's no way. There was almost three inches. There's three inches of snow on the ground. Yeah. So I had spent the whole day doing circles, doing like grid patterns. Couldn't find that deer. I went back the day, was that a two a week later? Yeah. I went back to pull my trail camera out off of there and I'm walking. I'm like, I'm going to go look for this because now it warmed up, but the snow is melting. I'm like, maybe I can, maybe I'll get to a spot where I can see some, I can hear some crows or I can smell the deer. So I'm walking around out of that place, walking around. I'm walking back to my truck and in my footstep at my heel, I noticed a tiny little bit of red. Tiniest little That's bit of crazy. red. I had stepped in a blood drop. And but now this this blood drop is about six inches beneath the snow because this is a week later, right? Yeah. And like that snow had melted and it's still six inches down, like five to six inches down, but it had snowed a lot in that yeah, week. It was a big storm. Yeah. It had snowed a lot. We must have got in that whole week we must have got eight. Probably up there, probably 10 inches of snow. Yeah. So I had noticed a little tiny bit of red in the back. He my heel had just caught. So I start brushing snow. <laughs> eight in, like six <laughs> inches down, eight inches down. Like, and sure as shit, those are the pictures I sent you. Yeah. I found I got back on his blood trail. And man, I excavated with my hand. Like took six inches off of snow off that whole area, trying to track that blood trail down. And I tracked it a ways. That deer, where I shot the deer, it went say say it went to the left, button hooked and went around, and followed me back to my truck. It's crazy. All that way, back down <laughs> the trail, all the way to my truck. I unfortunately I couldn't get, like I lost the trail. I couldn't. I couldn't keep. It ran into the bush and like I just like would on that where the path was I could excavate like I was clearing path off and I got on that blood trail and those are the pictures I showed you of me where I yeah. cleared the I cleared down and I was showing my wife and she's like you're fucking nuts but I was up there for hours and hours and I'm digging apart like I'm digging and excavating this whole area with my hands 
Just looking for this blood trail. I found, I got on the blood trail for a good little bit. That's dedication right there. <laughs> oh, well, That's it, something else. It, you know, it's mind blowing. I don't care about me sitting out in those freezing temperatures and hunting for that long. That, like, down to my deep core bo- bothers me. Yeah. You don't like losing anything like no. that. No. I put in too much time. And like I make sure I make sure myself that this like in your bow hunting, doesn't matter if you're bow hunting or rifle, I'm sure it happens. Yeah. But I put as much time as I can humanly put into making sure that this shit doesn't happen. And like yeah. there's this time it wasn't me, it was the equipment. Yeah. So yeah, needless to say, I got home and any single mechanical broadhead is no longer in my house, it's in the garbage. And I've said it from the get-go. I'm not pro or against. I haven't been bow hunting long enough. I've I've seen the damage that mechanicals do. They're it's insane. I, they I just I want to add one thing. So I did punch my tag. Yeah. Like that was it. I punched my tag. And to me, I, like I I you, you know, know killed I'm ninety percent like I, yeah, the deer it, it's gonna die or it's it, it died. So I punched my tag. But uh, yeah, man, I didn't. Uh, I didn't sleep at all that night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I remember or the you next talking night. about it. You could tell. Yeah, yeah. I've I've always said I'm not pro or against mechanicals. I don't. I haven't been shooting enough to have that say. I haven't had one fail on me or anything. I'm more of a fixed blade person, but I'm pretty mechanically inclined away from hunting and i always say anything mechanical no matter who makes it no matter what happens no matter what brand i don't care if it's the top end stuff or the bottom end stuff everything mechanical at one point in its life will fail yeah it breaks down eventually that's why we have mechanics for every single machine that we we create it breaks down so everything works good until it doesn't and you sure as hell hope that you know it doesn't fail on you when you need it the most yeah what and, do you do? well you know and i've had i've i've used mechanical broadheads in the past and they've you know they've done good it just came down to mm-hmm. where the elements were just too much f- for it and like it is what people, it is, right? The people designing it, I don't think they take into consideration minus 25. And snowing. And snowing, yeah. Like, like but then, then you think of it like conditions. Yeah. So basically, it was just like a field tip going through that deer. And it, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it took longer to die than it should have. Yeah. And, you know, in, in saying that about the broadhead, if that had been any time in September, well, hell, any time in October with the year that we had, yeah, probably would have worked 100% fine. because it Absolutely, was like and I've, degrees, shot, I've shot animals with those, with mechanical yeah. broadheads, and they've worked fine. And, like, we talked about it, too, because I did have a mechanical broadhead, and I was shooting mechanical broadheads up till this spring, and we were talking about it. Yeah. And the mechanical, I hit a bear downhill it was steep downhill and the mechanical broadhead it broke off at the arrow yeah but i've had fixed blades do the exact same thing do you know what i mean they catch a a bone and like bones tough man those animals are tough yeah and no matter where you hit an animal you're most likely going to hit but doesn't matter if you hit it with like obviously you hit it with a bullet it's going to do more damage because there's I mean, it's it's traveling at you know twenty five hundred, three thousand feet per second, yeah. where an arrow's traveling at three hundred feet per second. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. But I can honestly say you'll never see me shooting another mechanical broadhead again. And um, but I guess if you're you know, like you said though, if it wasn't minus twenty five, it wasn't snowing. I mean, huh. if it, yeah, if it was mid September. Like what I wouldn't have given if I could confidently shoot 80 yards 
with a broadhead. What I wouldn't have done for a mechanical for that elk on day two yeah. or three, whatever yeah. day it was. Well, and Broadside, that's the thing. Couldn't yeah. ask for anything better. Like, yeah. And I've had, yeah, like, like uh, Sam Davis, who we had on as a guest, he shot his buffalo pass through right. with the same broadhead. I was shooting on a deer that didn't open. He had a pass through on a buffalo, which is insane. Yeah. And we're shooting the same, basically, like he's not shooting. Our arrows are doing the same. Our arrow setups are very similar. Yeah. Our bows are the same, 70 pounds. Yeah. It was just some bad luck. Yeah. And some harsh temperatures. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, lesson learned. I mean, we talked about it. It just, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's one of those things, I guess it happens. Yeah. I suppose it wouldn't be the end of the world too, if you're confident in a certain type of mechanical that you keep, you know, one, one or two in your, your quiver, one for follow-up shot for that farther shot that, you know, if you get the opportunity yeah. or, you know, summertime, not summertime, but you know what I mean? Summer conditions. Yeah. And you see, the only thing is I know guys who do that. I know guys who will have their mechanical or their fixed blades in there and they'll have one mechanical or the vice versa. Yeah. The issue is like I was shooting those wasps and I've shot Montex and I've shot uh slick tricks and I've like, shot lots of different type of broadheads. Yeah. They never fly the same as the mechanical. Like the fixed blade broadhead doesn't fly the same as the mechanical broadhead. It just doesn't. Yeah. There's a lot of surface area in comparison. Yeah. They just don't fly the same. Yeah. So if I have, if I had those, like my Matthews, I was shooting, I was dialed in. I was hitting 80, 90 yards. I was hitting four inch grouping with those wasps. Yeah. Cons- consistently. My RX four with those mechanical broadheads, I was hitting better than that. Like it wasn't the shot. It wasn't the shot placement. It wasn't the bow. Yeah. It was nothing else than the mechanical broadhead failed to open. Yeah. Because it froze. And like when I tried to open it with my finger, like it didn't open. Like it was frozen. Yeah, that's crazy. But like yeah. I said, it's it's uh it's one of those things, yeah. Like like you said, it's September, October, those things will work. With that shot. 40 yard shot. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I hear you. I could do that with my eyes closed. Wasn't the shot, wasn't the bow, wasn't nothing. It's just that it just shitty circumstances and that broadhead didn't open. Yeah. It didn't leave enough like the biggest thing it was it not that it didn't leave blood because it did leave blood. It's just shitty circumstance that weather, it was snowing. If it wasn't for that storm. If it wasn't for the storm, yeah. I would have found the deer that night. Because yeah. I would have went back to my truck, I would have got back on it. Most likely, I probably would have bumped it again. I just would have... I would have found it sometime during the night. It might have been 3 o'clock in the morning, but I would have found it. I wouldn't have quit if I was on it. The only problem was it was snowing. Yeah. And I wasn't doing any good. It was snowing too quick. It was just like shitty, all around shitty circumstances. That sucks. I was pulling for you. Is that I I had already pulled the pin. Is it one or two days earlier? And yeah, it just got too cold for me. The conditions, the wind, the cold, like in the minus twenties. Yeah, because that was the last day that happened. The last day of our that was the twentieth. Right. Yeah, that was the and last I, day to hunt, and it was cold. And I was like, because we were talking, and I was like, "Fuck, man, I don't want to go out there." But yeah. I was like, "I gotta go." Gotta and go. all the bucks that I had on camera, I, I did go out to a couple of my other spots. And there was just, check my cameras. Hunted it like there was deer there. When I checked my cameras, all the bucks had disappeared like a week before. It was like the does had been bred that were in the area and the bucks yeah. had shifted to another area. Yeah. You know, just still in search of the last couple or whatever. And, you know, that that is what it is. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. it's part of hunting. So, I mean, for like for myself, that's one of my biggest takeaways is uh, 
from that seat from last year was uh like you said, I mean anything mechanical sooner or later is gonna fail. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's got, and that's no knock on any company that makes mechanicals. Absolutely not. Because you get down to the places where it's warmer for longer, those yeah. things will probably be fine. But when you put them, oh yeah, the well, and that's the thing is they're making those they're, they're making those broadheads in the states, and a lot of those guys are shooting in places where it doesn't get, yeah, minus twenty five. So, and you might have a person who goes their entire bow hunting career never has an issue. Then you talk to somebody else like yourself who's killed with them, loves them, and then all of a sudden it's like, damn. Well, and that's the thing is like I don't really give it now. I don't really give a fucking about all those other times that they do work. I really only care about the one time they didn't work. Yeah. Because that's why I like I would trade the rest for that one back. Yeah. We're not talking that once in a lifetime buck. We're talking that animal that you take and you want to bring home, feeds the family, fills the freezer. Well, and that wasn't even a big. That was like it's that was just... a big. I mean, that was a three point. That wasn't. That's definitely not yeah. my biggest whitetail not even close it just hurt it was the last day everything yeah and you did yeah. everything right you know i've yeah. seen the prep like a lot of people don't see the pictures that we share with each other and all that kind of stuff and laughing all that kind of stuff at each other but you're out there slinging arrows all the time the prep is there yeah every day every I never day. miss i never miss a day yeah even when like i could like if i have i've had injuries in my shoulder and i'll still go out there and i'll pull it yeah yeah, it's, yeah. it's just unfortunate. Uh, yeah. So that's one of my biggest takeaways from this year. But what about yourself? You got a new bow this year. A new bow. Uh, I'm going to, I'm doing lots of research. I'm going to put a new, I'm going to go for a slider. And I've kind of got it down between black gold and, uh, and spot hog. Yeah. I go, if I go spot hog. I'm thinking about the triple stack. Yeah, that's the one I shot. Um, I, I kind of like how without the horizontal pins, there's uh, your field of view is a lot more. Yeah. And that's how mine is now. I've, I've got the horizontal five five pin um, trophy ridge. I, I love my sight, but I'm ready for a slider. Yeah. Uh, because I want to do a lot more archery. Or sorry, 3D archery where sometimes you have a lot of those farther shots that are a little more fun. And I, I don't want to be holding over and guessing. Yeah. I'm I've gotten to that point now where it's like, yeah, 87 yards. I'm going to dial that thing. Yeah. I'm going to punch that thing right in the 10. Yeah. I'm at that point now where that's what I want. And I can't do that unless I have a slider Yeah, consistently yeah. and confidently. Yes. I could potentially do it by holdover, but to do it three times in a row, probably not. Yeah. Happen. Well, like we talked, it's harder to get to those farther ranges where, and the thing is like, you can shoot. I've seen you shoot. You could shoot 80 yards, 90 yards and hit a dinner plate all day long. Yeah. But when you're shooting on an animal, you owe it to that animal to make sure that like with a slider, you're taking the guesswork out of it. Like you're not just like, you don't have a pin. If you had a pin for, you know, like they used to make, um, Trophy Ridge used to make that crazy eight. I had that that crazy eight, and I don't it know had, if I've seen that one. It, yeah, it had it had four. It was a horizontal, but it had four on the top, four on the bottom. Okay, four pins, oh, four on the bottom, and I had just the regular Trophy Ridge vertical pin. I had the three, then I had the five. Like I've tried, had so many different sites, but. They had a crazy eight. Yeah, you could, you could go 20, 40, 60, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and like 90. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that was what it was or something like that. But yeah. Yeah. It had four on the top, four on the bottom. Crazy eight was called. And it was oval. The well, whole thing cool. wouldn't fit in your peep site. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy site. They don't make it anymore. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I don't think they make it anymore. Interesting. But when you, yeah, when you, I, if you have a pin, you just like, you need a pin. That's the thing. And like, there's a big difference between like, if you're shooting at 25 yards or say 35 yards, you could hold your 30 or your 40 yard pin on that deer and it's going to kill the deer. Yeah. Right. If it's at 85 yards, there's a big difference between your 80 and 90 yard pin. Oh yeah. 
So it's, so it's nice about the sliders. You can dial it in. And like the triple stack, I was shooting at the beginning of the year, I was shoot, shooting the CBE slider. That's right. It's a five pin horizontal fixed. Then I was messing around at hardcore one day and I was looking through that, the triple stack. And I was like, that's the nice thing about horizontal or uh, vertical pins is it just open you, your, your field of view is just like, there's nothing, there's no, there's so many less obstructions in your sight housing. Yeah. And I started shooting that. And I was like, man, that's nice. Yeah. It's really and I want, nice. I want the smaller pins too for like, I don't know if I can, I haven't looked into it enough. I can't remember if we talked about it. I'd like my close pins to be the point zero one nines, your standard pin. Yeah. But my farther pins, either the bottom two or the bottom one, whatever the slider is usually your bottom, I guess. Each of them, I guess yeah. everybody's to their own. But I'd like that one to be that 0. 0.010 pin, that small pin. Because I find even at 60 yards, it's probably my age, but I can put my regular size 0. 0.019 pins on the 60 dot and the small dots. And I can have it centered over that. And it covers up the whole dot. I can't. The whole, the can't, whole target. The whole, th- it, it disappears on me. So it's like, okay, well, I guess it's centered and I'll shoot it. And I can be, maybe I'd be able to shoot a lot better with the smaller pins because maybe I'd still be able to see the outline of that three yeah. inch circle. It's not that I'm not hitting where the pin is, but I physically can't see it. So it's yeah, like, well, yeah, and you, and that's the thing if is, I can't see it? Well, so like I have, I shoot that triple stack and I, I have it. You could put your, you could put your, it's got the, you've got your three pins on it. Yeah. I was shooting hundred yards. You put your first pin, your 20 yard pin at a hundred. Yeah. Your 40 yard pin is, it's probably that far, like 125. Right. I was shooting at 120 yards with my 40 yard pin, right? You can't see, you can't see the dot down there unless you have a, unless you have some magnification in your peep sight. Yeah. You cannot, like you, you just can't see down that far. I mean, some guys might can, but I definitely can. No, I can't. <laughs> yeah. So it like, and I, I I'll take and that, that so there's, we've talked about this too before is like it'd be nice to to be able to like hand pick the best options off each site or off anything each bow each this because like that's one thing about like like cbe had a lot of really cool details the bottom four pins were smaller than the top two pins or sorry the bottom three pins were smaller than the top two right it had the 2.1.19 and the bottom two were 0.10 yeah right and it had the dampener so you can it had the sun shield, right? That's right. So you're not getting the starburst effect, yeah. or you can adjust for the starburst yeah. effect. And see, like with my spot hog, I had a piece of electrical tape I put over top of it, and when I wasn't using, I'd throw it on my stabilizer, and I would use that piece, yeah. just a piece of electrical tape. I'd use that. I do that as Damper, well. Yeah. So I mean, it's got each site. It's got so many good things, so many bad things. Of like any site you could pick, you're gonna like something of it, but you wish this site had that or you know, it, it it goes for anything that backpacks, bino harnesses, anything, right? Yeah. Um. So, but anyway, at that distance, like, without some magnification, yeah, you're 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 just picking the target. So when you're shooting at the target at like 120 yards, you're gonna shoot a couple arrows, and like you're gonna basically, it's like a trial and error process. You're gonna shoot at it. You're gonna shoot. Say you shoot three arrows at a target. You're gonna remember where you had your pin. Yeah. And then you're gonna see where your arrows were hitting. Now that's where you have to base it on because, like, at 120 yards, that target is basically your pin. Yes, absolutely. So there's a you, you kind of just got to get you, you. It's not something where you just all of a sudden get to shoot 120 yards and be like, okay, well, like my grouping's off because it's like your grouping's not going to be on. 
And that pin could be a micromillimeter as for what you're seeing through that peep sight. It can be a micromillimeter yeah. off and you're 10 inches out. Oh, uh, yeah, at least. Like when you get at there, the distance. first time you start shooting, some arrows might, like I've shot and arrows that miss the target, right? Depending on where the where your arrow is hitting downrange in comparison to where your target, like your the green dot is, that's where you line it up and you just got to send a couple. So after a while, you're like, okay, listen, so if I'm shooting at 120 yards, it's going to take you a couple arrows to realize where you line where you line the actual pin up with the target. But still, like well, you're 120 yards without any magnification in your peep sight. Our eyes just aren't meant to see that far. Like that's a yeah. long way, man. 120 yards. And that's for people who are listening too. It's not that we have any intention on killing anything at that distance. Um, and for the people who can shoot farther, they're putting in the time. They're 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 confident they will outshoot all of us. But the way I look at it is if I can go to the range and I can shoot a hundred yards, 110 yards, and I can group six inches, four inches, I'm going to look at 60 yards and I'm gonna be like, there's nothing. Yeah. You know, it's not that stuff can't happen, but you're confident in your ability because if you can make a nice group at that hundred yards, then it should be a chip shot for any of those shorter ones, barring, any situations that come up that we all know of when you're out there, you know, yeah. animals are all jumpy and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, like you still got to pick and choose when you're going to shoot. But if I know I can stack those things all day long and I can try to shoot Kevin's knocks out at a 3d shoot at a hundred yards so that he can't beat me like he was doing to me. Um, I'm going to feel so much better about a 70 yard shot. Well, it's that your confidence just, too. Confidence is, has everything yeah. to do with it. So I'm very confident at 60 yards with a broadhead. We put out 65, 70. One, I don't have a pin for it. So I'm adjusting for, I'm, a, I'm guesstimating, which I don't like doing. But if I've got that slider now and I've been practicing at 100 yards all year long, or as much as I, the year I can safely do that, and I know I'm going to punch that thing, 70 yards is nothing. 80 yards, depending on the situation wind, all that kind of stuff, I could confidently say, no, I'm going to kill that thing. Well, like myself, I'm like, yeah, 70 yards for me is my most comfortable shot. 70 yards. But that only reason I say that is because I shoot 70 yards in my front yard every single day. Yeah. 70 yards is my most comfortable shot. Now, is my grouping the same as it is at 50? Same as it is at 40? No, it's not the same. Because I can't see the target as clearly as I can yeah. at those closer distances. But I'm more comfortable taking that shot at that distance. Way more comfortable. Because that's your bread and butter that you're used to every yeah. day. Yeah. Like at at 40 yards, you're hitting arrows. You're not hitting like you're not hitting arrows at 70. Like my grouping is still still hitting the target, right? Yeah. And even with a with a broadhead. 80, 90 yards, no problem. 100 yards with a broadhead. I was shooting 100 yards all summer with a with the broadhead. And I'm watching the videos that he's sending me, and it's... <laughs> yeah, and, and my grouping is tight. It's not like... But, yeah, I, I don't know. It's... Uh... It's nice when you get everything dialed in like that, though. You got the confidence for when you go out. Well, and, and, and I, all that. you know, I pause there, and I'm just thinking about... I just they, I go back to that deer and it's like you know that deer was thirty seven yards and it's like man like that that shouldn't happen. Yeah. Like you do all these things you pre- you prepare you prep and like to have something that fails when it's not when it's out of your control like you there's it, that's the thing about hunting there's so many uncontrollables right you can only control so much and like you can't control every little thing of everything but but the one thing you can control is how much time you put into it beforehand. Yeah. How yeah. many arrows you put down range? How confident? And you know what? If something's not working, being able to ask for help, being yeah. able to admit that maybe there's something wrong with your form. Because usually the last thing it's going to be is your equipment. Yeah. Usually. Oh, yeah, usually. I mean, most of the time it's going to be some minute little yeah. form issue that's causing you issues. But you yeah. got to be able to admit that. Or at least admit that there's a chance of that and trying to find some help. 
yeah. I've got stuff and it's like, I don't mind videoing myself. Yeah. That's a good uh, way. Not to post, but it's like, I can't see myself otherwise. But if I can look at a video that I got set up on tripod while I'm practicing, I might be able to pick out, Oh, on well, that one shot there, my elbow is a little higher, a little lower than all the others. And then yeah. it's like, I bet that was that one that just didn't quite feel right. Or, you know, whatever you're punching it or yeah. whatever, whatever your, your, your thing. You is. went to uh thumb release too, which is a big, that was a huge game changer. Game changer. Now, so did you change your draw length at all? I didn't have to. I thought oh. I was going to. Um, when I got it, when I got my bow set up at Jim Bow's in Calgary, there, um, he watched me shoot the whole nine yards because I had just bought yeah. the release too, and I was asking him how I looked. You know, like if I, because for yeah. me it felt good, and I was like, how does it look? Does it look like it needs? To be adjusting he said i think it's totally if it feels off we can shorten it length you know whatever yeah but it actually i went in thinking i was going to have to change my draw length but yeah. i didn't for yeah. whatever reason whether it's well you could have been too you could have been like because you're shooting what 28 and a half 28 and a half yeah you could have been right on the verge of like a quarter inch do you know what i mean like you could be yeah. like because sometimes you could be like like i shoot 29 I can shoot 28 and a half comfortably. I'm probably like 28 and three quarters. Yeah. But you can't. You can't get there. You can't get there. Like 28 and three quarters is probably perfect for me. I could shoot 28 and a half or 29. I shoot 29 now. Yeah. I shot 29. All, I think all, all my bows now are 29. Like all the bows I have are all set up for 29. But yeah, I think like I used to shoot 28 and a half. And then I switched it to 29. Yeah. But I could probably like, but I can shoot to 20 and a half totally comfortably. But I, so I, I kind of thought like my thought was like, and I'd have to talk to, uh, Greg about it, Greg pool, like just those half, how you get those half. Cause I know there is things you can do with your cable, uh, like twists and stuff to get That's right. different. Like you can, you can, you can get a little bit more, a little bit less. Out of your draw, obviously, right? Like if you're if you're shimming cams and you're doing a quarter twist or half twist or one twist, every time you do that or you shift, say you have, say your top cam's hitting first, right? So you got to twist your bottom cam cable. Every time yeah. you do that, things are shortening or expanding. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, cause and effect. You're as soon as yeah. you touch something, something else has been affected. Yeah, yeah. No, but you're pro you're probably the same. So you're probably you were probably like right on the border where like you're you're shooting with 20 and a half with your thumb with your trigger with your trigger release right with yeah. the wrist strap and you probably could have you could probably do the same thing where you can shoot 29 with a thumb or 28 and a half with a thumb yeah right you're probably right in there that same thing where you're probably in between yeah that was let me tell you it sure helped me out and I, I felt 100% confident with my finger release too. But I found I was able to pick out. Uh, once I got used to the thumb releases, is, I was able to pick out a couple flaws that I figured yeah. I had in my in my form with the finger. Um, I was just able to micro tune that thumb release to my hand perfectly. And, uh, and then eventually, you know, after shot after shot, like I put a couple thousand shots through my bow easily from spring till fall easily. And, uh, I could pick out in a heartbeat as soon as I did something, whether it was hand torque, whether it was something with my thumb release itself, just the way that I pulled my technique, squeezing the shoulders, the whole nine yards, there was a couple things I was able to work out. I'm sure there's still a couple things that I can work on, but I'll have to talk to some of my, I got a good friend who is more than willing to help me out with some form stuff. Used to be a coach and everything. So I'll take advantage of that too. Just try to work out any little indiscretions that could help me out. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it pushes me that 10 yards farther than I could before in confidence. Yeah. I think, the, I think the distance. longer, 
stretching out to those longer distances is just it's just getting arrows down range. Like it's just yep. those thousands, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand arrows you put in it for those further distances. Yeah. And they will expose bad form and uh any imperfections with your bow for tune setup, whether it's yeah. your bow itself, whether it's your arrow. The farther you go, the more it and that's no different than rifles too. It's all the same. The farther you go, the more it's going to expose. Yeah. So as you stretch it out, be more willing to uh have those faults show and be more willing to get help to help fix them. Yeah, and, and they, something, yeah, exactly. Nothing major. It's all small stuff at that point. Because if you're stretching it out, you're obviously or I would guess that you're already um, have some really good grouping, you know. At well, 60, I would hope 70, so. I, I hope if you're hitting, because otherwise there's no point. <laughs> no, if you're grouping four inches at 30 yards, there's no point yeah, in stretching you, it out any further. No, you got to be worried about breaking arrows. Yeah. Before you move to the next. Like, Which I love to do. I love yeah, even breaking my somebody own. else's. Yeah, your arrows, I, I, I live for that. <laughs> I like even break my own arrows. I don't. As soon as they start rattling off each other, I start switching to a different circle. <laughs> yeah. How did you like your boots this year? We both ran a set of boots. That's right. Yeah. Uh, first they... time running the a- AQs. AQ. Yeah. AQ, they took a while AQ. to break in. Yeah. Yeah. They always give me shit for not pronouncing it right. But Aku. I say it. I used to say it like it looks AKU. Yeah. <laughs> I love those yeah, boots. Dude, those are the only I, boots. It's, I normally go through a set of boots all year. Those boots. They're these mint. These are tough as nails. Yeah. Like these They're hard these like boots. the break in time though. Yeah. The break in time is more than any like more than Crispy, more than Loa, more than Kenetrek, more than my Mendels, more than Mendels. Yeah. But I, I love I them. haven't I've I have three pairs of those boots and like I used a pair, I used a pair in like, at, like in February, I took a pair at a goat hunt. Then I used that same pair in the spring. And then when it was hot, I was using the lighter set. And then in the fall, I was using like from like October, like end of October, November, December, I was using the other ones. Yeah. And like, yeah, they're all like, mine. Mint. Do you have any in- insulated ones or? Yeah, I have. Well, I have, I have two sets of insulated leather insulated, and then I have the lighter set that's uninsulated. Okay. And then I have the same pair, but it's it's a suede, not leather insulated. Okay. Yeah, mine are non-insulated. Yeah. So the only time I had. To yeah, stop I have the same boots as you. You just have the higher. You have like the the ones that are uninsulated for me. I have the lower cut version. You have the upper cut version. And, oh, okay. And yeah. yeah, so I love them. I use them all year. Yeah. The ankle sport is second to none. Um, the only time I had to stop using them is when we started getting into the minus twenties. I had to switch over, back over to my Mendels, uh, just because they are insulated. It's the only way to keep my feet warm. Yeah. Um, other than that, I love these Akus. Like they're they were so comfortable once I got them broken in. Yeah. That's the only thing I found is like the break in time is longer, but man, are they comfy once you break them in? And I was running sheep feet this year too. Well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Which like I have custom orthotics. I have custom orthotics in my, in my everyday, like my work boots have custom orthotics. I had custom orthotics in my other hunting boots and I had sheep feet. They're good. But they're like the sheep feet are good. They're not the same. Like they're not as high quality as the custom the ones you'd get from your, you know, when you go see the foot doctor. Yeah. But that's only because I mean, they're trying to appease everybody that comes. That yeah, but they're still they were good. They made a big difference. That's good. Uh, one thing I started running this year, this fall was socks with liners and i know we talked about this in the springtime yeah i started running this was socks and liners this year and i absolutely loved them yeah 
loved them. So like, like actual hiking sock, right? Like, yeah. So I'll put a, I'll put a link up to the exact pair I was running, but in the springtime or in the, sorry, not in the spring, in the early year or early fall hunt, when it was September, it was really warm. I was running just the liner. Oh, okay. And then as it started getting colder, I would take the liner out and run the sock. Yeah. And then as it got really cold, I was running both. The only downfall is those boots I have are a little too tight for both. Oh, okay. And if I found, like, you're better off running less sock and having room wiggle room in your boot. Yeah. Than being double socked and tight because your feet were going to get colder if your foot's tight in your boot. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be better off going barefoot in your boot than having it too tight. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, I think that'll be the only thing I look at different in boots here. These boots that you hooked me up with, I mean, they look brand new, dude. Yeah. And you hunted with them all year, all fall. I kicked, I kicked the shit out of them. Yeah, <laughs> they went through everything. Um, so yeah, it's quality wise. I mean, yeah, really good boot, really good, yeah. really, really. So I think I just want a set of insulated ones. Yeah, and I bet between being able to switch between them, they'd last that much longer. Yeah, just, you know what I mean. You're not running your, you're not insulated. You know, deep in the winter, you can be like, ah, it's time to switch over, and they're getting a break and everything, and. Yeah, well, I found even like those boots, like, like, like Loas. I was surprised, like the one I was wearing the Loas. After a month, those things looked like I had them for four years. Oh, really? They were just haggard, but like these, the AKUs, they're just like all of them look like I just pulled them on the box. Yeah, and like I shit kicked them. Like yeah, I hunted and... a lot of days this year, man. Uh, at least a hundred days. This year I hunted. Yeah, you're out lots. And like, obviously I'll switch between the three of them, but even if you divide that by three, that's still, you know, 33 days. Oh yeah. And they all and look your, brand new. Your feet are everything. Like it's, yeah. it's tough to drop some big money on equipment. I don't care what it is, whether it's footwear, camo, anything, it doesn't matter. There's a big difference in quality. There does become yeah. a line at some point where, you know, your average guy can't afford certain yeah. things, but your feet. Well, these are priced your, reasonably too. I think, they, you know, you can get absolutely. The They're like $400. Yeah. And that's, that's nothing. Like no, I mean, it, it's not. More. Yeah. I mean, that's more affordable than you get. Some boots are 800 bucks. And, and I would put, I'd like all the boots I've worn. Those are the best boots I've worn. I'd have to agree. Yeah. And, the and thing I'm not is just too, saying that because they support the show. I'm, I mean, if I they did, if if I didn't like them, I wouldn't wear them. They wouldn't be supporting the show. I'd be like, you know no. what, your product sucks. Sorry, like we, you and I don't get paid for this shit. We just do no. it because we love it. And like, if I have to cut a hunt short because my boots don't work, guess yeah, what? I'm not wearing them again. <laughs> I'm wearing them again ever. You can no. you can keep sending them for free, and I might dole them out to friends, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to wear them. Yeah, it's your feet are everything. There's two things in life. There's don't go cheap on a lot of stuff, but there's two things in life. I was always told never go cheap on footwear, no matter what it is and your bed, because you're yeah. spending 80% of your life on one or the other. Yeah, I love that. And too. it's true. It is. it is 100% true. Yeah. And you know, like I know when I first got into hunting, I bought what I could afford. So I get it. Yeah. I've been at this a little while. So I figured it out, but if I go and buy that hundred dollar cheap pair at Canadian tire, yes, they'll get me through the season. It's going to be painful, but they'll get me through the season. I get it. I get the affordability thing, but guess what? I'm going to spend more money on those cheap boots that I am oh, saving yeah. up and getting this $400 pair. Absolutely. Because this $400 pair is going to outlast all those boots. Every single one of them combined. I'm going to guarantee it. Yep. Because I'm not nice. Like we don't, we don't live in country where people say, well, you know, you didn't do this. No, we're on shale. We're on we, oh, we, everything. You name it. We are on it. Yeah. 
that's the kind of conditions that we have here. This is yep. where they should do product testing. Is that well, it, there's de- like there's desert, there's high mountains, like there's shale, like you said, there's shale, there's the Rockies, and like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I put those boots through the ringer, and I was totally impressed with them this year. Yeah, totally blown away. I was like, wow, these are good boots. I was like, man, I don't even need to get boots. Cool. I don't even need I'm... new boots next year. No, and you were saying you were pretty much going through a set a year, like every. I go through. Getting... Oh yeah, I go through a set of boots. Like by the end of it, so like, I break them in, in the like, February, do like turkey bear, and then the fall hunts. Yeah, and they're like by the end they're trashed. Like I'll show you a pair of boots. I'll take a picture and I'll show you a pair of boots. What they look like after hunting with one year, like my crispies or my lows, and you're like, "Holy fuck, dude!" Like I'm not easy. I'm not easy on any of my equipment, especially my boots. But like, look at the AKU boots. They oh. honestly look like obviously they have a little bit of scuffs and like the laces I had to replace because they got cut and torn. But like the boots themselves are mint. I could say the exact same thing. Like all the seams, everything. Yeah, like they're. And for me too, I'm. It's not just hunting season. I'm out pre-scouting, hiking, checking trail cameras, trying to learn a new area. And so it's not like it's just hunting season. It's yeah. spring, fall, summer. I'll run these things as long as it doesn't get crazy cold with the boots that I have here. Should I'll be ice fishing in these down in the lake? Sounds silly, but yeah. you know, minus five ten, no problem. I'm just throwing a pair of wool socks at these boots, and they're fine. They're waterproof. You know, like that's what I do with my boots. That's how I decide what I'm going to wear and what I'm not, because I'm not going to have five different sets of boots for five different activities that I do. I'm going to find one I can use for one or two that I can use for everything. Yeah, they got a nice new set of boots out too. They're to the higher, the higher boot. Like, do you like, do you like the these eight like inch the ones. high, mid, or low? These whatever these eight inch. I think these are yeah. eight inch ones. That's what I like for yeah. the terrain that I hunt here. Yeah, two, see, I like the mid. I don't like the okay. low. I like the mid. I don't like the high either, but I like the mid, but they have a new nice high, like the ones you have. Yeah. They got a new, really new. They got a, a brand new one that just came out. They look, they're okay. intrigued. If I like the high, if I like the high cut, I'd try them out. I'll have to take a look at those. Yeah. Check see. them out. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I like these just for the steep train that I potentially go in. No, you know, I'm not always in it, but when I am, yeah, I need that ankle support. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, that was another thing this year. And like for gear wise too, I was running that triple stack spot hog. Love that. Like I'm using that again this year. Yeah. I like it's gonna be hard to get me off that thing. Yeah. Obviously, there's some things I wish it had, but I mean, like all around, I love that more than anything. Um, you know what I like? I didn't like. I shot that Matthews this year, and you know what I didn't like? And like, I always shot aluminum bows. And then I went to a carbon. I went to the R. I went to the Redworks carbon. Yeah. Um, right. And then I was, you know, then I went to like the RX three, RX four, RX five. Um. Is like so I I don't wear gloves. Like I can't wear gloves. Like even at work, I just can't wear gloves. I don't like. I don't like the way they feel in my hands. I just don't. Yeah. That aluminum. My hand was sticking. Oh. to the riser yeah like you know when you touch like you like you sit there your hands in your pocket it's cold minus 20 it's cold and then you go i touch the i grab my bow and my bow is minus 20 Wait. my hand would stick to my bow yeah, yeah. Tu- where it was touching the aluminum because it's frozen yeah because i have condensation from my hands being in my pockets and it was sticking to my bow. Yeah, that's not a good thing. I didn't like that. <laughs> well, I could see that. I could totally understand yeah. that. And I forgot about I, you know, and it's funny because these little things you you forget about. So that was that was like that. Our, I love that bow, awesome bow. Um, I just don't like the aluminum riser because my hands. I just I can't like I. I can't wear gloves normally. I definitely cannot shoot yeah. and wear gloves. I had to practice that quite a bit this year. I have a real tight set of gloves that I wear yeah. for when it just gets a tiny bit, you know, on the chilly side. Yeah. And then I slept a 
for when it got down to the minus 20s, I slipped a pair of merino wool ones over top. Right. And I had to practice with those because it, it's yeah, it feels different just having that extra layer in there. Yeah. And if I didn't have to, I just have really bad circulation in my hand. So I need that extra little layer. Now I've got the hot hands, uh, little pads like on the top of yeah. my hand or like, yeah. in between the layers. Or sometimes I'll put them on my palm and I'm able to get it out of the way pretty easily. Like if something were to walk out and I had to shoot, yeah, I could get it out of my palm. It could drop wherever in between the layers. It wouldn't affect my shot that way, but yeah, if my hands are cold, I'm done. My feet are. Cold. I've had it too, where I've had like my, I, I like when it gets really, really cold and like you click, you take your release and you click it on your D loop. Yeah. And it's aluminum. I've gone up and touched that thing. And it's like your hand, like oh. it doesn't stick to, but it like quickly. Yeah. Like quickly sticks. And you're like, Oh, like once you hold your hand for a couple seconds, it's good. Right. Yeah. But as soon as you touch it originally, like, whew, that's freaking like, you can tell <laughs> it's tacky on your fingers. Yeah. But my, my bow, actually my bow, when I grab my bow, my, like where the front of the riser was sitting on my, like when you grab it, it was, my fingers were sticking. Like you could hold it obviously for a little bit and thaw, but I just, I don't like, I didn't like that. Yeah. So then that's I went to that, I, you know, well, we'll get into what we're shooting. Like we'll get in, I think we should get into, uh, moving 2023 where we're getting to, but I'm just kind of like, want to go through the things that we used in 2022 that we liked and we didn't like, um, but yeah, other than that, what else did I use this year that was new? Do you, uh, that I went to the, I went from the spot, the uh, spot messenger to the Garmin. Yeah. Which I awesome. have as well. Yeah. Garmin in reach. In reach. Phenomenal. Way better. Yeah. Yeah. I love that thing. I never, I, well, never, I, had I, I never leave, I never leave home. Even when I check the programs, I don't leave without it. Yeah. Same here. I've got it everywhere. Even when we're on a drive to like Calgary and that, we have Kootenai National yeah. Park in between. Yeah. There's no cell service in there. So I'll actually bring it with us for uh, if we see an accident, you know, anything for in an accident, who knows? It could be anything. You just broke yeah. down. It's you can message home, you know, come pick me up, broke down, whatever. Yeah. Anything. Well, I mean, did you pay it? Like, um, like, don't get me wrong. Like I paid, uh, it was a thousand dollars for the unit I bought and it's $70 a month. Yeah. But like the problem with the spot messenger was, I'd be in areas and it wouldn't work. Oh, really? So what the fuck good is something when I need it? Yeah. And it won't work for you. And it won't work. Like, that's the thing is like, if you need something in a spot, like you're getting a jam and you need something, all of a sudden that $1,000 and that $17 a month. Means nothing. It doesn't seem too much. Like no. a lot. We, in peace of mind for your family too. When we were well, and, moose and, hunting. Uh, yeah. Like, sorry to cut you no, off there, but right. like. I, w- I was going to say is that it's nice to have that connection too with home because if something happened at home, which is like how it used to be, something happened at home, say God forbid something happens at home. Yeah. You're on a seven-day hunt. Something happens on day two of your seven-day hunt. You don't find out about it till you get back out. Yeah, you need to be and, kicking yourself. Yeah, and there's an opportunity where you could have been home for those five days. You do know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it's, it, it works it's both huge. ways. Yeah. And even when we were out in hunting camp, like we, we were way in the back country for our moose hunt. And even when I was out with my hunting partner, who is in the same group hunt, moose hunt as my wife. So even if my wife wasn't able to go out, I'd still be out with my hunting partner, helping him out. And I just, you can set it up so that you can set up like a group messaging thing. So it's like anybody I want to text at yeah. the same time. So, you know, my wife, his spouse, that whole, I sent everybody every night or partway through the day. It didn't even matter. Everything's good. A okay. And it's not like we're having a big conversation and those are all free texts. It's not like every time I send a text out, it's like, you know, it's costing me money. If that's a concern, like there's, there's lots of free text options and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I go into the back country to get away from everything. So if there's an issue, they get brought to my attention and then, okay, we can deal with it. So it's great to have that connection. And then at the same time, while I'm out there, it's a clickable button. Everybody knows I'm a okay. 
or everybody in camp is yep. a-okay so they can all talk to each other too um and then i'm signing off unless there's something important that you need to tell me then you respond to it great it's good to know it's and yeah. then if there is no response and it's like everything's good back home i can go back to just relaxing and yeah you know yeah. focusing on you know the enjoyment of being out in the outdoors but yeah you know and you see i think if i think if i was going to buy another one i'd buy the one that you have I wouldn't buy the one that I have because there's a lot of stuff on the one that I have that I don't use. Okay. And I don't need. Yeah, because I've got the Explorer. Yeah, and I have it's the got... uh, yeah, I've got the up the uh, that Montana. Yeah, and mine and was it... only. I think I got it on sale for five hundred dollars. Yeah, and see, mine was, mine was a thousand, yeah. and uh, yeah, if I was to buy it again, I'd buy the one in here because there's a lot of options on there that I don't need. But it doesn't mean that anybody else doesn't need them. But yeah. just for myself personally, I think the one that you have is is yeah. good. But like, yeah, that's the difference. That's Bob Messenger. It just wasn't working when I needed it to work, and it's not working when you need it. What the fuck good is it? Yeah, and then and and Garmin does have that in reach Mini as well. I yeah. do know a couple people that have it. They love it. Myself, I'd lose it. I need the bigger. Yeah. I need the handheld and you'll see it. And if anybody who follows me on Instagram, you'll see a lot of my pictures. It's clipped to my bino harness. It's oh yeah. There me up too. On my chest. Yep. Um, I don't want to be searching for it. Yeah. And if I have something small, like the mini, it works perfect. So there's nothing against it, but for myself personally, I'd lose it. I would 100% lose it at some point. So I need that big bulk. Yeah. It's not even that big. It's the size no. of my hand, but I don't have small mitts either. So it's something yeah. there. I know it's there. It's right. I can see it at all times. So if something's happening, I can turn it on, send a signal, whatever I got to do. So yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, that's, no. I like it there. And I've yeah. got it for archery people. You can, I, I've got it on my right side because I'm holding my bow with my left. I don't want anything on my left side. Yeah. So anything's tangling up with my string or anything could potentially, you know, like swing in the way. So don't worry about any of that stuff. You can have this thing hooked up wherever you want. And yeah, you well, it's just got a little clip. And I do the same thing. On my backpack, I have it on my waist. It's got a little pouch for it. So oh, it's yeah. right on my waist. But if I'm not wearing my backpack, say I'm just going for a quick walk, check my trail camera, I'll take it out of my backpack and I'll clip it on my bino harness or yeah. I'll click it on something. It's always with yeah. me. And I stopped, wearing, I stopped wearing bino harnesses this year. I kind of just went to the single strap. I just, I don't know. I, I, those fucking bino harnesses, man. Like, I can never I find one with a good clip on it. They always seem like the, the magnetics or the, sorry, not the magnetics, the, uh, magnets. Yeah. They shit the bed and they'll eventually they start, you know, the binos are falling out all the time. I can't get over, away from mine now. I've got yeah. Alaska guide ones. Have you ever tried those ones? No, I but I like I've tried I've tried F eight I've tried I I did try I think I did try the Alaska guide. Yeah, I tried I them all mine. like with the with the magnets with the zipper with the strap with the loop. Yeah, and I but you know my biggest problem is I always just forget to clip them in or do something like with yeah. just the single simple strap. I found I just hang there all the time. The only gotcha. shitty thing is. You have to have your cups on them because if you're in the snow or the rain, yeah. you go wet. Yeah, I think the only thing that I don't like about my bino harness is like I've got my two compartments on my side. One's got a couple extra reeds in the little pouch. Yeah, that's the only thing too is nice is because it's got the pockets yeah. where you can my, have I've everything my, there. I've got my wind detector in my other one. Yeah. But if I'm in a tight area like a lot of the shit I hunt is 30 yard shots. I'm in some tight bush a lot of the times. So it's like, okay, I'm checking my wind, but it's like, if there's an animal over there and I undo that zipper a tiny bit. Is that enough noise to set off that animal? You know what I mean? Like yeah. it does make a little noise. My strap at the top is just a tension strap that's connected to my range finder holder. Yeah. So I have that all set up tension wise. So there's just enough tension to hold my top, my bino harness flap down. Yeah but the sides are zippers. So I always have to be very mentally aware that when I undo that zipper, I make a noise. And it's like, we've talked about before 
you know, it sounds like it's a little bit of noise, but out in the bush, that little bit of noise is yeah. a lot of noise for something that's close. And yeah, when that's so fun, yeah, the, and if you're always you doing, know. if you're always glassing, like you walk ten feet glass, if you're still hunting, yeah. you walk five feet, ten feet, and you're glassing all the time. It sucks to always like undo, open the zipper, undo this. Yeah. I like it with that, and like what I did is I just took a key ring and I just pushed it through the strap, and I clipped oh, yeah. my my. uh range finder on it and then i just put it in my pocket like by that's a good idea jacket pocket or my pouch or my pan pocket and they just they worked on a bungee cord sort of thing okay that they come with vortex they all come with that bungee cord yeah i know exactly what you're talking about did so you, you run if... any did you run any new glasses here range finder binos or anything like that or no that? like i was running so like uh I I have I've got the Razer UHD, I got the Razer yeah. HD. Yeah. Um. Like I was always running the Razer HD, and this year I started running the Razer UHD. Now, if you're gonna buy one, I would say probably the HD is more than enough. I don't really notice any yeah. difference in the glass between the HD and the UHD. The UHD are a lot bigger. Okay. And it's just the only difference is the texture of the UHD. Like the material they use to coat them with is a lot different than the HD. And because I was I was running them, I wasn't putting in my, bi my bino harness anymore. The bigger ones didn't bug me as much having them just gotcha. on that strap that makes sense but other than that no i just uh i was running the like if you're not running rifle scopes and everything i mean it's pretty basic range yeah. and it's range finder and binos for the yeah. most part well other than a spot or two depending on what you're doing in rear yeah and i was using what the same stuff. i've been using those the, i got the same two spotters depending on what type of hunt i'm going on yeah uh but like yeah like other outside of my caribou hunt i didn't even use a okay spotter really this year a couple times for like just glass and we were glass for moose but we didn't see anything but like well actually i did uh we used it a bit for moose actually but like for elk no deer no i got like when you're new, when uh... i'm doing i'm whitetail hunting i don't even bring binos yeah because you're in some tight stuff yeah yeah, for the moose hunt, yeah, this year I had picked up that uh, that new Viper Vortex Viper uh, spotter there, and uh, going into the new country that I've never hunted, I didn't I didn't pull up any moose with it or anything, but it was cool to see some country from you know a yeah. long ways away, and be like, oh, we need to go check out that area over there, that totally looks moosey, or you know even. And while I'm moose hunting too, I'm I'm also looking, being in a new area, it's like, well, let's check out, you know, you're finding some new elk area, you're finding some new deer area. You're up there glassing, so you might as well check out, you know, as much yeah. as you can see. So it was, I, I was pretty stoked on, on, uh, on that spotter, just how well I could see and the distances were just ridiculous. Yeah. And did you, first. did you... I don't remember. Did you end up getting that uh, Siru tripod, the yes, carbon one? Sick. Did you... Yeah, it's awesome. Absolutely eh? sick. It's just, it was. Yeah, I'm glad you convinced me. Uh, Kevin brought down. I was thinking of a a, um, a couple different uh, tripods and everything. And Kevin and we, Kevin was coming down to our 3D shoot that we host here. He's like, before you purchase whatever it is you're looking at, I'm going to bring you the. The different kinds that he that he had there yeah. and he's like i just want you to look at this siru one how do you pronounce it again i, the, I that's siru. how i pronounce siru i don't know if it's siru. right or not but siru All right anyway yeah so we brought it down we set it up and brought the spotting scope to the shoot and everything and we were just put it on there and oh, i couldn't get over the difference and how smooth it was and you know it wasn't a whole lot more money it was an extra 100 bucks or something like that 200 bucks yeah best hundred or 200 bucks he ever convinced me to spend yeah it's and well unreal. and real yeah and it's well it's carbon it's light and then it's got that va5 head on it yeah which is awesome it's, 
it's just ridiculously smooth. And and that's the thing is like I've I've bought so many different tripods and like I was saying uh, like we were talking about we like we like you've mentioned before you're going to buy a lot of shitty gear before you buy the right gear. Yeah. And and you already know it. So when I came down and I showed you like like I think I showed you the Vortex Summit yeah. and I, th- I think I showed you three different tripods and I was like listen like these are nice. This is way better. Yeah. Like the head is way better and the head is what makes it. Like oh. you can get used to the tur- like if you the turnbuckle whatever whatever option they have for your for the legs doesn't matter you can get used to that but it's all in the head. Oh yeah. But and that is all, like that's the best. There. For, and like the bang for your buck, I think it's four hundred dollars. Yeah, Canadian, American is probably hundred bucks. Yeah, <laughs> but like, it's worth it. It's worth like you're gonna buy a two hundred dollar. If you're gonna buy a two hundred dollar tripod, you're gonna be next year. You're gonna be buying the three hundred dollar tripod. Yeah. Year after that, then you're gonna buy the four hundred dollar tripod. And you're gonna be like, why didn't I just buy this in the first? So place? instead of just spending 400 bucks you're wait you're you're yeah and like you're gonna buy it you're gonna buy it for 200 you're gonna sell it for 100 you're gonna buy it for 300 you sell it for 200 and you're gonna yeah. buy the good one anyway yeah but like that like the I, amount of time I, you I, spend i'm, I'm talking from experience because i had all those when i was showing you i was like man like yeah. this is i went through all this you want this one i'll sell it to you <laughs> yeah you, i mean if you're gonna buy one you can buy this one yeah or you can buy this good one and never buy another one again yeah any amount of time that you'll actually sit with that tripod and it's not like you just have to have a spotter on it. I mean, you can set up your binos and everything on yep. it. If you're camera, if you're glassing for long periods of time, your camera, whatever, it's just like, I got it. Like it was just, and I'm so happy that I, I purchased that tripod, but yeah, yeah it, you know, it sucks sinking that kind of money into anything, but it was just like, first time I set it up, I was like, hot oh, damn, this is yeah. so nice. Like, I'm never going to buy another one. I'm never going to need to. No, you never need to. Like I've used a lot of different tripods and like that one is just like, I was buying a new tripod a year or two a year. And I was like, this yeah. one I bought, I haven't used a new one since I never had a, like, it's just, yeah, it's awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to taking out like so busy. Things are just settling down now. Um, I'm looking forward to taking out the spotter with the tripod and doing some digiscoping yeah. um, for the elk and stuff just down in the wetlands. And uh, I got a couple of my main spots. There's one main spot I can't get to this year, just for whatever reasons. It's uh, I just can't get down there. But there's some other vantage points I can get to, and I should be able to get some pretty cool videos of uh, of some of the animals that are down there. The mature bulls, the big, big mature bulls, probably won't be down in the wetlands. So have high tail that they usually separate from the big groups yeah. down there and head up higher. But I'm sure I'll still get some photos of some pretty sweet bulls down there and if i can get out in the next couple of weeks here and get down there we should be able to see some pretty nice uh white tail box too before they drop their antlers yeah that'd be nice do you are you gonna do any shed hunting there's not enough uh i'd like to say i'd like to get into it a little more yeah. but the the lack of animals that we have here right now for multitudes of reasons um it's not worth it to me. No, I, I hear you. Yeah, it's, it's just it's there's just not enough animals to be like, yeah, I'm gonna go find some sheds today. It'd be like, I'm just happy to find an animal these days in our yeah. Area. And I find you got to pick your spots. Like, life well, gets there's some, an art to it. You get there's, well, you well, you get busy. You got commitments, and like, yeah, I'd rather waste those. I'd rather not waste, but I'd rather spend. You know, I'd rather burn up those days on something else. Yeah, I mean. I got ice fishing two minutes away from my house. Yeah, that's true. And it's hard to turn down, you know, that's what I'm doing this weekend. Not inviting Evie down. She's in Calgary right now. So maybe I'll go out after work tomorrow and try to catch a big bass or something like that and just send her photos. <laughs> I like it. Get up on the leaderboard before she's even in town. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. She's just going to send you, send you a picture oh. of her moose and she'll be like, oh, man, she, dude, you're out of she, my league. Buddy, you're out of my league. Oh, well, like, don't even don't even talk to me. Go go cook dinner. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I think there's uh, some dishes in the sink you could do. Yeah. Oh, Karen. Yeah. I already did them. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, so it's it's yeah, we're out every weekend, one way or another, outside. And uh, that's good. So, and I, I might still try to go down and 
do a little bit of predator hunting too in a couple of the areas that a deer hunt just to help out a little bit and yeah. some i like to change it up too yeah but i'll probably wait till february before i do that yeah no and, doubt uh, wait till the coyotes and everything are yeah so any other gear you use this year that um the new bow i mean i really went out i, I think new i bow, shot thumb release yeah, there's a lot tripod, there. boots, tripod, boots. For me, it was those water. boots. I went to this. I went to the aluminum riser. Yeah, going back to the carbon riser, which we'll get into. I think we'll get in. Probably do a full bow because I kind of already. It's not even 2023 yet, and I've already, <laughs> I've already into my second bow of 2023. Yeah. Um. So we'll we'll get into all that stuff. Um. Like yeah, what I we're think... using, but like for that meant like the socks, the liners, and it's funny, like those liners were a big, big deal. I really enjoyed it. Really like those. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty much that's yeah. There was a lot of changes for me. Yeah. The, but the bow and the thumb release were the biggest overall changes in, yeah. in things. So when do you think you want to get like your new site? Like when do you want to have your mind made up for your site? I'll do some more research here. I'll, I'll, call my bow shop that i normally um go to as well because i know they sell it so i'll get some prices and see what he's got for stock coming in and see he usually goes he's close to the u.s border so a lot of stuff that you know he doesn't have to he can get shipped up just below the bar border and then go pick it up um so i'll talk to him about uh shipping issues and stuff like that and what i can do for pin sizes and yeah so a lot will come down to that and then well, probably my wife will hammer down on me for spending money here. I'm sure. <laughs> January, yeah. February. So I'll probably actually look at pulling the, the pin on it. Probably closer to very beginning of March. Depending on, depending on what I find out for shipping wise and stuff like that. I'll kind of have a very, because I'd like to have it set up for the, for the early year 3D shoots and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, no. But I think that's. That's going to be my main thing, I think, that I get this year. I'm sure yep. be, there's always something, but I think that and, yeah, just getting that thing dialed in and then we'll see what happens with uh, with shooting longer distances and playing around with some different broadheads and from the same company that, you know, I've been shooting with. I'm very happy with their stuff, but I always like to tinker with a, a new broadhead I haven't used. And Yeah, I'm sticking with the same. I'm going back to those wasp sharp, sharp shooters. Yeah, but we'll cover all that. We'll cover oh, like yeah. what we're going in twenty twenty three. But uh, yeah, I guess maybe we'll wrap this up, eh? Yeah, no, that sounds kicking sounds on good. close to two hours now. Holy crap! I should grab so, more beer. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just uh, we got this is episode ninety nine. We got episode one hundred coming out next, and we're gonna have some. Uh, we're gonna have quite a few giveaways for that one. So, folks listening in, make sure you guys tune into that one. We're gonna have Paul be on. He's a longtime friend of mine and Pete's and, uh, you know, he's just, uh, he's a guest of the show. He's been on, I think three times, three or four times. So awesome. Paul's a great guy. And we're going to have, like I said, we're going to have lots of giveaways. We're going to have some focus swag. we got some arrows. we got some broadheads. Uh, we're going to have some gift cards. So it'd be pretty exciting. Yeah. Episode 100. And, uh, thanks for everybody for, uh, for listening. Cause if you weren't listening, we wouldn't be doing this. No, no, it's fun. been, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun and, uh, I guess this pretty much wraps up 2022. Yeah, you betcha. And uh, thanks again. We'll talk to you later, Pete. Yeah, have a good one. Okay, guys, I want to thank you again for tuning into the Focus Hunting Podcast. It's coming at you as part of the Waypoint Outdoor Collective. Quick shout out to the sponsors of this show Vortex Optics, the best in optics, period. AKU Boots, yoke to your feet. Now, if you guys go check out the uh, show notes, um, you're going to find some promo codes. Use them. Save a bunch. And uh, if you guys could please leave us a rating or review, we really appreciate that. And uh, until next time, love you guys.